Let's get nasty on a Wednesday. It's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN with Kerry Davis and Jamie Rivers. I'm Anthony Stalter. 202, your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. A quick update from Bush Stadium. The Cardinals came back from a two-run deficit that was allowed in the first inning because of a error by Victor Scott in, in center field. They battled back, a couple of home runs, one by Yvonne Herrera, one by Brandon Donovan. Uh, but now they trail the Phillies 3-2 to two in the rubber match in the top of the six. Andre Pallante came in in relief of Lance Lynn, quickly got, got in a jam, first two batters reached, and a single, an RBI single by Brandon Marsh as he slaps one to the opposite side, has made it 3-2 Phillies with runners at the corner. Uh, runners at the corners, I should say. Palante still in the game. So keep you updated no on that one. Did you say that? What's that? No outs. Zero outs. 0.0 0. 0 outs here. Castellanos. As Nicholas Castellanos steps to the plate. Good place to be in. But last night was, last night was a, a perfect debut by Sonny Gray. He pitched five scoreless innings, struck out five batters, earned the win in a shortened outing as Nicholas Castellanos goes to the right side and gets in another <laughs> run for the Phillies. How are we trying to be positive here, guys? We, we got a lot of hate yesterday. We're trying to be positive. It's not our fault that the... Well, how about we turn the is... TV off and just talk about yesterday? All game. right. That's fine, too. <laughs> that was, uh, to be positive about it, though, that was a nice hit by Castellanos. Okay. Yeah, the second baseman was standing on second. He wasn't in his normal spot. He just went opposite. I don't it's know. better than a deep drive to left field. Very true. <laughs> All right, so Sonny Gray, guys. Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray pitched well last night. That was, his, uh, considering he was on a pitch count, that was about as perfect of a, of a debut as you could ask for the pitcher that you made your ace this, this offseason by giving him the $75 million contract. That was good baseball last night. Strong defense, excellent pitching. They didn't score a lot of runs, but so what? You got it You got it done. You evened up the series. You gave yourself a chance to win the series coming into today. So now a great, great outing by Sonny Gray last night. I thought it was awesome. Honestly, I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, you're sitting here and just because you, the Cardinals didn't sign Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery or one of these guys that was at the top of the food chain, although Sonny Gray had a hell of a season last year, you still wonder, like, Eh, and then he's got the injury. Eh. Here, here, I text this last night in the group. To me, Sonny Gray equals Ryan O'Reilly with this team. And hear me out. I don't mean there's going to be a world championship or whatever. I okay. think that's what you said. No, Go ahead, it's Karen. really not what I said. Uh, 205, 410, Fine. 24. Write it down. You said that Just because of... One Sonny Gray, the Cardinals yeah. will win the championship. Write it down. I know you, write it down. You got your crayons there. Write it yeah. down. Yeah, I'm going to eat it after I get done writing it down. <laughs> yeah, the different colors don't taste different, by the way. <laughs> Anthony told me. Yeah, so, no, they all taste the same. Yeah. Uh, when I'm watching, a couple things. From the moment he became a Cardinal, and he, he's carrying around his baseball, and he's like, it, it reminds me of like Ryan O'Reilly out there doing the craziest little drills and doing things off ice and like tapping the ball in the air 10,000 times and switching the blade over and like doing all to, and then to watch him kind of get out there in spring training and go through and he's you know talking to the catcher and yelling about the count and the fig, fictional batters and doing all this craziness leads me up to last night watching him deliver literally and then post game listening to him describe and talk about it and mm -hmm. i was like this guy's a leader man like he is ultimately does he do as much as ryan o'reilly does for the club who knows to, to be determined i'm talking more about his attitude towards his profession and the way he leads by example out there and it's one start i get it but It'll be more than just one start based on the fact that he has good habits mm -hmm. and that he's continuously working at his craft. I was very impressed. And the pitch count was 65, right? He, he threw 64 pitches. He was, he, he did a fantastic job. I think, you know, the more he gets prepared and then is able to go longer, I think we would have seen more innings had, had he been allowed to, but I thought he was outstanding. And then I want to give JoJo Romero some love oh, because man. he came in. Man, and, that was hey, awesome. I, I, he was a guy last year, got his first ever decision as a major league player last season and this season i was a little concerned but yesterday was outstanding came in got four strikeouts just did a fantastic job and the thing i love about jojo if you're gonna if you're gonna get the sunny grays and get a good start you gotta finish it you gotta have the bullpen do a great job the thing i love about
about JoJo is his energy, his mm -hmm. his passion. He's not afraid to let you know, I enjoy doing this. I strike you out. I'm going to celebrate. I'm excited about being here, about this opportunity, about doing my job and doing it well. So I thought all in all, yesterday was a fantastic job by the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, he threw a perfect pitch on the outer black there. He's fired He's fired up about it. I, I agree. You're starting to see more energy throughout the, the club, too, whether it's the youthful energy of somebody like Mason Wynn, who, you know, when he got that base hit the other night to tie to tie the game he was fired up and he's looking in the dugout you you see that across baseball it's nothing new for the cardinals but when you have two guys on the corners that are your highest paid players are supposed to be then therefore your your best players and paul goldschmidt and Nolan arnado you're only asking those guys to be what they are Paul Goldschmidt, I'm sure, is a, is a leader in his own right, but he's a quiet leader. You don't see you don't see a lot of up it's ups and downs. Arenado is intense, but he's like internally intense. I think they needed what we're seeing here in that youthful energy that we saw out of JoJo Romero, that we're seeing out of Mason Wynn. Some of these other guys, I think, yeah, like loosen up a little bit. We all know last year was a was a rough year. We know this year the expectations and the you know everything's high again. But that doesn't mean that you have to play tight 24-7 just to see, just to wait and see how things play out. I enjoyed last night's game, and I think a lot of Cardinals fans would, would probably agree. Yeah, I would agree. I think emotion is good. Yes. And it doesn't have to just be the young guys. Like, Romero's not a young, young guy. You know, he's, he's a newer guy to the league. Mason wins young. Victor Scott's young. Jordan Walker. But what about Wilson Contreras? Plays with a ton of emotion. Definitely. You know, like... There's nothing wrong with that. Now, you don't need a team full of those guys because that's when things can kind of get off the rails sometimes when everybody's just a little too emotional. Right. But it is nice to have that emotion in your clubhouse or, or carry in your locker room or whatever mm -hmm. it is. It's good to have that. Yeah, you definitely need a few of those guys. I, I always say you got to have a couple of guys on your team, no matter what team it is, that may go out and do something. You're like, uh, he did what? Yeah, okay, I can see that. Like, you, he's a little crazy. You need you need two or three of those guys, and then you got to have the guys that can rein those guys. And you think about Dennis Rodman and Michael Jordan. He didn't know what the hell Dennis Rodman was going to do. Michael Jordan didn't care. You're going to be here 7 p.m. Yeah. tip off? Cool. Whatever you, you do, grab now, these boards. you're going to grab these rebounds. Yeah. You got to have a couple of guys on your team that are like that. I think Wilson Contreras is one of those guys. I think he has that energy. Jojo Romero, he shows that energy as well. And so I'm, I'm excited about that aspect of it. Still got to get, you know, some of these players, some of these guys hitting and, and, and performing on that side of it. But all in all, they did a very good job yesterday. Now they're losing 4-2. to two. The base is drunk, and it's... Uh, one hour. Uh, but hopefully the people but, are too. <laughs> Maybe we can get out of the inning, huh? Zach Thompson in now after Andre <laughs> Palante unfortunately created a bit of a mess. The bases are loaded. One out now, top of the six. It's four two. Victor Scott couldn't get to one that, that was kind of a, sh uh, a shallow fly ball that, that landed in. No runs were scored on the play, but now Zach Thompson has got to get Kyle Schwarber out and get out of this inning with as little damage done as possible. In fact, he just struck out Schwarber for the second out of the inning, so nice job thus far for Zach Thompson. What did you see, Marsh? Uh, how did you guys feel about the bullpen management last night. Now, I know right now it doesn't look that good. <laughs> Ali Marmel, I thought he did a good job at managing the bullpen, especially getting Matthew Libertor out of the game when mm -hmm. he needed to instead of letting him sit for another, you know, get be in the game for another batter, and who knows what the game would have looked like after that. But yeah. what did you see out of Ali Marmel's decisions last night and then obviously today too? Yeah, so far today it's kind of tough, right, because Lance, Lance Lynn is dealing with uh, – both sides are, so I don't want to just make this about Lance Lynn, but – you got wet conditions. It's been kind of misting throughout the course of the game. I know that both pitchers are struggling to find to find a grip, and I thought Lance Lynn battled, especially after giving up the, the two runs in the first inning. Again, off he, he could have got out of the inning unscathed, but Victor Scott had the ball go off his glove in center field, and Lance Lynn kind of settled in, only gave up the two runs. I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, Does Lance Lynn have a rule in his new contract where he only pitches on rainy days? Yeah, rainy or cold it's, days. It's been That's bad. it. He's been unfortunate. That's pretty much it. And right Zach Thompson, outstanding job, gets out of the inning, strikes out. I don't know who, who was behind. It must be JT Real Muto. Yeah. JT Real Muto strikes out. Inner half, it is a breaking ball in the inner half of the plate. 
Nice job there by Zach Thompson. He he could be another weapon out of your bullpen. I know he struggled as a starter, but, but last year pitcher. he was he he started off very well in the pen. They sent him down to get stretched out, and then he eventually came back up later later in the year. Yeah, he could be another lefty weapon out of the pen. He's a good pitcher. He, you know what? Is he a starter? Is he a rotation guy? I, I don't know, but I I have like Zach Thompson every time. Like he does have some bad outings, but each year that he's played, like I like what he brings to the table and he he pitches with some emotion too like he does that. all right it's fast on 101 espn has the starting <laughs> rotation been better than expected we'll get into that conversation next on 101 espn Windows. Window World is your only phone call. That's what you got to do. The preferred window of the St. Louis Blues. Uh, they're ranked number one in number of windows sold in the country by Qualified Remodeler Magazine. Window World windows are one of the two windows, by the way, with the good housekeeping seal of approval. And, and why is that? Well, because Window World uses a double strength glass that gives it a strength not commonly used in replacement windows. So not only is it a more durable window, it's a more efficient window. On those hot days, it keeps the heat outside. On those cold days, it keeps the cold outside. That's more efficient and keeps money in your pocket. They also back up their their windows with a lifetime warranty that covers all parts, glass breakage, and labor. They also continue to offer 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit. So please, right now, if you're remodeling, putting new windows in, you're looking for replacement windows, call Window World today at 314-993-1800. That's 314-993-1800. Or you can always visit them at windowworldstlouis.com.
Cardinals trailing the Phillies 4-2 to two in the bottom of the six right now. They had rallied to tie the game at two apiece after the Phillies had taken a 2 nothing lead on an error by Victor Scott in center field. A couple of home runs, one by Yvonne Herrera, who, could, who has stayed hot, and one by Brendan Donovan, but Andre Pallante came in relief of Lance Lynn, gave up two runs in the top of the six, and uh, Cardinals again trying to rally down 4-2 in the bottom of the six. Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter. It's the fast lane on 101 ESPN. This starting rotation has been better than I expected in the early going. Sonny Gray last night, we, we talked about it in the first segment. Sonny Gray was sharp. And had Sonny Gray not been hurt, he would have been the one that had the three starts already. Two, but you know, when Zach Thompson started and then one last night, assuming that he he wouldn't have gotten destroyed in in either of those, you're paying him to be your number one. He would have been that. Stephen Matz has been a pleasant surprise, and I don't I don't think that Stephen Matz was ever somebody that Cardinals fans looked at and said he couldn't get the job done. The question has been, will he be healthy? Really? Because his yeah. first handful of starts were dreadful and the, the went, first year or last year the first year okay dreadful it was no good paul gold people were talking about dfaing him mm-hmm. eight to three years that are left or four years whatever the hell's on his contract yeah so now last year last year was a stud for well, no, a, actually, a he short got period of time to the bullpen last year uh, but he came he back he was a stud in spring training last year but he had he had a stretch Define last stud. year he was really good in spring training okay. last year I, I he had he a stretch it. last year. He pitched very well. I think until, that's when he came back from from yeah. either injury or being he got injured or being um, sent to the bullpen. Well, he was sent to the bullpen, yeah. and then he got brought back out of the bullpen and, and never was, looked back yeah. until injury. Correct. And yep. so I, I don't even know why I brought it up. I wasn't trying to argue with you. That's fine. I mean, regardless, right? I'm sitting here going, "What? Why do you even argue about?" <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Stephen Matz. Stephen Matz has been a pleasant surprise. Lance Lynn has been, like we said before, he's been Lance Lynn. A couple of good innings, a couple of not-so-great innings. A blown belt. Yeah, blown belt at one point today. Right he's out. been fine. Kyle Gibson, one excellent start, one rough start. That's been the starting rotation. They've kept you in most games. Kyle Gibson, unfortunately, had to wear the one on Sunday. That that was a blowout. And Miles Michaelis had, had the rough outing to start the year. Other than that... Your pitching staff, your starting pitching staff, has given you chances to to win games. It's all you could ask for at this point. Well, we talked about you know eating innings, and I think they've done a great job. You talked about Kyle Gibson having a really good start and then having a really bad one, but was able to still give you enough innings to where your bullpen wasn't blown out or wasn't too tired or worn down for the rest of, <clears throat> for the remaining remainder of the series. And so you know those things are important. I, I think they have done a pretty good job. They the the numbers aren't going to be eye popping. You're not going to have you you know, 10 strikeout games or, or eight strikeout games, but you're going to get guys that are going to give up six hits, but hopefully give you six to seven innings, and then the bullpen can get in there and do a great job. And I think the bullpen has done a good job. I think Kittrich has done a, a decent job. I think we talked about JoJo Romero. Ryan Helsley has done a really good job in his opportunity so far this year. So all in all, I think we're still a few pieces away because Andre Pallante is is – he scares me when he comes into the game at times. Um, I'm still not all the way sold. I know Zach Thompson was able to get out of that last inning, striking out Schwarber and, and Turner, but I'm I'm not all the way sold on him yeah. being in that role just yet. I'm still well, looking to see. Cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I I'm yeah. still waiting to see Middleton, see how he performs when he is healthy and, and able to do what he needs to do. But all in all, it has been, th- this is the, the bullpen and the starting rotation has done a pretty decent job so far. Yeah, I gave him a C minus yesterday. <laughs> they are what I thought they would be. Yeah, I know that the old Dennis Green thing, but they are like I, I didn't expect more from Lance Lynn. I, I didn't expect more from Mike Liss or Gibson or or even Matts. Matts, quite honestly, Matts is probably outperforming what I thought he would bring to the table. And Sonny Gray, small sample size, but he's exactly what the doctor ordered. He's mm-hmm. what you need at the top of your rotation, and the bullpen and everything else is exactly what I thought it would be hot and cold throughout yeah. the season and like pitcher to pitcher not just like day to day like right. person to person you got a guy who goes in there pitches well hands it off to the next guy who gives up three hits in a row maybe mm-hmm. two runs like this is what i expect from the cardinals it, it also and to me it goes hand in hand because you're talking about you're talking about run prevention essentially we you can't overlook the fact that mason Wynn has been a stud defensively we expected him to be a stud everybody talked about his defense 
the play he made again last night where he's he is making at least one play a night where he is ranging up the middle get, you know strong throw yep. it, either to, to force a double play or to you know get the runner out at first base he has been everything and more defensively i know that tommy edmond played a solid shortstop for you this is different when you don't have the shift anymore you have to go you you better have a stud up the middle and the 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 double play combination of win and nolan gorman has been excellent too we saw i don't think it was last night there's i think it was game one of this series where win and gorman very tight double play gorman flashing the the strong arm accurate as well i think gorman has been solid at segments overall the defense has been what we expected so i think from a run prevention standpoint it's been very good thus far and we'll see if the offense can come alive here maybe when the, the temps start to warm up a little bit outside right, of that why does everybody else's offense not have to wait till it warms up you don't well, who are we about talking about oh, name it atlanta they play in the south it's not cold. What about the cubs no Cubs offense is going pretty good. Well, they played in San Diego right now. No, the wind must have blown out. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. I'm serious. I hear this crap every year, and I get irritated by it. Like, the one that irritates me the most is, oh, Goldie, you got to wait till it warms up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul Goldschmidt. we got to wait on your terms. Right. It's a little cold out. The ball doesn't feel the same. He's a notorious still. I know, and I'm, I'm not just picking on Goldie, but I, I hate I hate excuses. How can yeah. other teams put up runs and you can't just because of the weather? Like, what are we doing here? No, I'm just saying. I don't like your. Maybe, yeah, I don't, maybe I don't, when maybe don't when the temps warm up. Wait, Jamie, what do you want? Why Why do we think it's okay to mention that? Wait till it warms up a bit. I I, I don't. I said, guess, guess what it is in October, Anthony. Cold. Cold. But they're already so you don't have so to worry about that. They're already warm happens, by then. Guess what else happens, Carrie, in October? To Goldie, same thing that happens in April. Oh no. Same. Tell, tell me I'm wrong. You're not. I'm not wrong. So you can't play in cold weather? No. I'm not saying it was an excuse. I just said maybe we'll see this offense, once it warms up a little bit, come alive. That's all. That's just, the, You Trojan horsed the excuse <laughs> is what you did. You hit it in the middle of the sentence. That's called Trojan horsing. No. Uh, no, you're not allowed in my establishment. I'm not opening the gate for your beautiful horse. No. Take it and get out of here. It's a gift. I don't want your gift. There's nothing inside there. And I'm going to raid you up. once you go to sleep. I'll back you up. Thank you. Yeah, some of those uh, warning track uh, fly balls. Maybe they go out right. of the park. Oh, God. Thank With you. the weather. We go. Jordan, Jordan, Walker. Jordan Walker. Jordan Walker. Next we're going to be talking about the X. Brendan Donovan seven. the other night. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Marsh. Yvonne Herrera hit, hit He might have hit today. one out oh, of the yeah. stadium. Yvonne Herrera doesn't mind the cold. He's got those gold gloves on. He's if good. If I may. You two wanted him out of the lineup yesterday. Um, that is not at all. Jamie and I had to fight you guys. It. No. That is my guy. <laughs> I will ride and die with that guy. You had Jamie him scratched and I yesterday. Thank you. What? <laughs> you are honest. Both of they you. They were worried. They were disgusting. worried about the losing the DH. Couldn't worried about both. Good catchers have, being in the, the lineup catchers in at there. the same time. You exactly. see this guy? I literally come to his defense, and he shoves me off the side <laughs> of the really road. Did. I'm that's sorry, Marsh. That's the Trojan yeah. horse that Jamie was just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> you really did. Unreal. You, you, hopped, gift you hopped said, in the car. Yeah. I pushed you yeah. out and then ran you over. Yeah. That's on me. And then you came right. up to me, and you said, <laughs> where are we? Where are we? Yeah. Yeah. Anthony, it happens. It happens sometimes. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Are the Blues a quote-unquote playoff team? Well, maybe if they're in uh, the Eastern Conference. So what does that mean? We'll talk about it next on 101 ESPN. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's April, which is spring cleaning time and spring weather. And at Window Nation, you can get windows taken care of. If your windows are cracked, leaking, won't stay open, won't open, well, now's the time to call Window Nation. Buy two windows, get two free. And plus, you can get zero down, zero interest, and make zero payments for 24 months. You can also get a pair of St. Louis Cardinals tickets with a purchase of a house of windows. Window Nation can install those new windows within a day or less, and their windows come with a lifetime warranty. Just reach out to them at 866 866- 90 Nation or go online at windownation.com. All they do is windows. They are experts. They installed over 200,000 windows last year, 40 times more than the average window company, and 96% of those windows require no follow-up service. Again, their comprehensive lifetime warranties includes the entire window and also the glass. Reach out to them today. Buy two windows. Get two free. Zero down, zero interest. Make no payments for 24 months. That's 866-90Nation or visit them online at windownation.com. ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Cardinals looking to win the series over the Philadelphia Phillies. They trail 4-2 to two in the top of the seventh inning. We'll continue giving you updates throughout the remainder of the game. Tonight, the Blues take on the Chicago Blackhawks. Pre-game starts at 6. Puck drop is at 7. And you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. Stay tuned. Later, we will talk with Brad Thompson and Jeremy Rutherford 
around uh, 5 o'clock. Brad Thompson once the Cardinals game wraps up. I'm Andrew Marsh, and this Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Finding roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? quote-unquote playoff team well maybe not in the western conference but if they were in the eastern conference they would be so what does that tell us about the team overall and i think this is an interesting conversation because we've often had it with the cardinals and the nl central and gauging where the cardinals actually are as a team compared to the rest of the league because they play in the nl central it, it offers a bit of a uh, smoke and mirrors jamie to use one of your terms a smoke mm-hmm. and mirrors situation but the blues at 87 points right now if you were to look at the wild card picture in the eastern conference the blues would be slotted right behind the lightning and and ahead of the capitals for the second wild card spot uh if they're in the metro you know they they'd have an opportunity well they wouldn't have an opportunity they'd be wild card team in the eastern conference so jamie if you if you were to look at this would you say this is still they'd still have similar issues they would still be just short of being a a a, a legit wild card contender or do you think that they're a better team that would would probably thrive in the eastern conference but the fact that they play in the western conference they come up short yeah well it is what it is right yeah, I mean, bottom line, like he, it's you could do that, probably do that story every other year, of switching conferences. Depending. Where are they in the league? I should have simplified it. Where are they in the compared to the entire league? Where do yeah. you think this Blues team is? Well, I think they're somewhere middle of the pack if we look at league wide. Like, here's where I go with it: is in the Eastern Conference, you've probably got five teams that are legit Stanley Cup contenders. And the five teams would be the Bruins, the Panthers, the Maple Leafs, although I put an asterisk there. I don't think they're truly a contender. But we'll give them that for now. The Rangers and the Hurricanes. After that, I don't think anybody else is a contender in the East. Whereas when you travel to the West, the three teams in the Central Division, Dallas, Colorado, Winnipeg, they're contenders. Vancouver, Edmonton, L.A. I'd say the Oilers and the Canucks probably fall in that. And then you still have the Golden Knights that, to me, although they're the second wild card team, when playoffs come, if they get in, mm-hmm. which it looks like they will, that's going to be a team nobody wants to play. Right. And then the bottom of the Western Conference, if you look at it, is far more competitive. I mean, you've got Blues, Wild, Kraken, Flames, Coyotes, and then it starts to dip from there. Whereas in the Eastern Conference, I mean, you go from Philly to New Jersey, which is not good. Buffalo, not good. Senators, not good. Montreal, not good. Columbus, not good. Yeah. So... I, Overall, the Western Conference is more of a competitive conference right now. Mm -hmm. So is it unlucky that the Blues are in the Western Conference? Because, boy, they'd be in the playoff hunt in the East. I mean, it is what it is. Maybe this year, but right. But the Blues team, overall, they're a middle-of-the-pack team. There are some big things that have to happen in the offseason. And I don't know what Army's going to do. I said it this morning on the the morning drive. I said... uh, Doug Armstrong's ability to accomplish anything that's significant is going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's going to be difficult is you have a lot of players with multiple years left on their contracts making big money. A couple things when you isolate that is where are you sending the money? Mm -hmm. Who who can take on your salary hit or your cap hit? And then most of those guys with the term have no trade clauses. So now you have to go through that whole song and dance again of asking the player, finding out, or making the trade, then asking the player, then the trade falls through, then maybe you have a disgruntled player, although Tory Krug will give him full props. He never looked disgruntled once this year and worked his butt off the entire year. You may not like every play he makes, but he's the one guy that showed up every game and tried to win. Mm-hmm. That's the bottom line. Not every play is great, but he's trying. But th- this is what I'm saying, how, how tough it's going to be for Army. And you look at right now, coming down the stretch, you know, Kevin Hayes, a healthy scratch again today. So he played two games ago, or a healthy scratch two games ago, played in Anaheim, healthy scratch again today. What does his future look like? But then again, like, what can you do? He's still got term on his contract. 
he still makes three and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you're Army, again, the biggest test is going to be what can you do with this roster that would be anything significant? And that's where, for me, I think Army's really going to have to go to work. Yeah, I think that's the hardest part is if you are looking to trade a player, the the opposing team, you have to have a willing participant. And then if you have, like you said, all of the no trade clauses, we saw it this summer with Tory Krug. Yeah, no, I don't want to leave. I'm not going to leave. And so now you're really... Or not that necessarily I don't want to leave. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. <laughs> right. I, I and, and, and I'm going to stay where I am because I, I have... I think he said something along the lines, I, we started this, I want to see how it, I want to finish it. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially how he was talking about mm -hmm. it. Um, but I think it will be a tough task because if if you are a team that has been good one night and then really bad some other nights, and if you've been a player that has been kind of on that roller coaster up and down, opposing teams are going to say, well, what version am I getting? And what am I going to give up to get this version of you? I, I, I think that's going to be always going to be the question going into the offseason is how are you going to move these pieces if if that is your plan, which I'm sure it is. And who's willing to 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 take on those players and what do you get in return? We talk about Jordan Cairo all the time. I said last week you weren't in. I don't feel like he's a person that could be traded. Because who's that? Jordan Cairo. One, because of the contract, and two, because of the inconsistency. Now he's a hell of a talent, and I'm sure somebody would say, huh, I can fix him. And I can get him to play every single night. But there's going to be some hesitancy, in my opinion, from opposing teams, whether or not they would want to trade for Jordan Cairo because of the contract and because of some nights he's just not there. Yeah, so I agree. I think a contender may have a problem trading for him, like mm -hmm. if they're going to have $8.1 million hit their salary cap. But here's where I'll push back, Kerry. Okay. And, and it's not like a pushback. Players like Jordan Cairo don't just happen to play in the NHL. And what I mean by that is this year he's got 63 points. Four more games, let's say he ends up with 65, 67 points, somewhere mm. in there. Last year he had 73 and 75 the year before. Mm. Th there's only one guy that's eclipsed that point total on this roster. And I don't even know, Vladimir Tarasenko, a couple of years ago, this year Robert Thomas, and before that it had been like a decade so those players are valuable. Right. Now, where do you look for that? There's plenty of teams in, in the entire league that would make that trade. Here's the caveat, though. What are they willing to offer up for Jordan right. Cairo? Like, will you get equal market value as far as player is concerned? Are you going to get a 60, 70-point player back in return? Are you going to get a top two defenseman? Probably not. Right. So Army may have to look at it. To accomplish task A, he may have to do B and C. And what I mean by that is if you're looking to add uh, another top six forward that you think is more of a 200-foot player, if it's the Billmore, maybe he makes six, seven million, somewhere in that category, you may have to trade Jordan Cairo for less, take mm -hmm. less back to mm -hmm. where you just take a third, fourth line player and a mid-round pick how does that go over with the fan base but hear me out so you do that and the fan base is all up in arms but what you do is on line two is the agent of player a mm -hmm. who you're really coveting kind of like the ryan o'reilly thing in 2019 where everybody thought it was just bozak and Peron, and then the whole city was ready to burn it down <laughs> and then army said hang on hold my beer i got one more thing that i've done here yep. i think that that's one way you could do it is is part with a player like Kairou for mm. less, but then in the same breath have an unrestricted player that you're willing mm -hmm. to pay six or seven million dollars to on line two and bring him in as the replacement. People may like it, people may hate it. I, I don't know. And, and I'm not saying this is something Army should do. I'm just talking about a, a path he could take to accomplish certain things. Do you have to be creative, especially with a tough division? We yeah. sort of talked about that in the in the office. Uh, you know, the Cardinals could be going through something similar too. Different division, of course. Yeah. The the division, according to you guys, is terrible. But uh, the Central in the Western Conference is not. It's one of the best in the league. Is it difficult to to retool with other teams that are well well beyond better than you? So, in my opinion, you have to ignore your division mm -hmm. at this point because of the wild card factor just ignore your division don't worry about it like if you've got dallas winnipeg colorado even nashville that's like on the uptick just let them go do your mm -hmm. thing 
for you as a, as an organization, if you're retooling, you have to just focus on making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about winning your division. Of course, you want to. I'm not saying you don't try to. But it shouldn't be the focus. Just like when teams sign players in certain divisions, you don't have to try and keep pace with them by signing an equal player of $50 million or whatever it is. It's never a healthy way of doing, of looking you know, at your neighbor and trying to keep up with them instead of worrying about how you're properly doing things within your own organization. So if, I, if I'm Army, I'm ignoring the noise around me right now. And Army is extremely focused. He is he's a detailed individual. He's going to have a plan. He's going to have like three or four different plans based on what players become available, based on free agency, all sorts of things like that. Uh, but he's got to stay focused on what the internal plan is and not worry about everybody else. Blues Blackhawks tonight, pregame starting at 6 o'clock right here on your home of the Blues, 101 ESPN, the Blues Radio Network. Jamie will be with us until 4 o'clock where he heads downtown. He's got the Valley Sports Midwest coverage TV side for Blues and Blackhawks tonight. We've got What's Trending next. Boys, we're just talking about playoffs and the NHL, and, you know, it's going to be exciting to see what happens coming down the stretch, and then obviously the first-round matchups are always awesome. The NBA has exciting playoffs, and FanDuel, America's number one sports book, they always make it exciting. Right now, if you're a new customer to FanDuel, you'll get $150 in bonus bets, Kerry. And it's guaranteed. Yeah, Jamie, that's 150 bucks. Win or lose, bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You talked about the NHL, but the NBA is in their final week as well. And that Western Conference, all you got about four or five teams within three games of each other trying to figure out their seeding. We'll see how they how they get it done going down the stretch. FanDuel's got all the action for you. They've got player props. If you've got kind of an angle on a certain player, maybe you're watching your Cardinals and you're saying to yourself, oh, I always know this is going to happen and, you know, the first inning. Well, they got first inning props at, at FanDuel. You can do it all, but you do have to visit FanDuel.com and use our promo code FAST. So FanDuel.com slash FAST. FanDuel.com slash FAST. Then you can make your first bet an automatic win at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Must be 21 or older and present in Illinois. First online real money wager. Only $10 first deposit required. Bonus dishes not with trouble. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling prom. Call one 800 Gambler.
time to find out what's going on in the sports world with What's Trending Now. Brought to you by Goodwill. Donate a car and get tickets to the St. Louis Cardinals. Welcome back to the Fast Lane here on 101 ESPN with Anthony Stalter, Jamie Rivers, and Kerry Davis. I'm Andrew Marsh, and it's time for What's Trending. Guys, Jackson Holiday will make his Major League debut as the Baltimore Orioles take on the Boston Red Sox tonight, a 6-10 first pitch. Uh, we've talked to Matt Holiday in the past, and we've talked about Jackson Holiday, and it seems like uh, everything has come full circle for Jackson Holiday. What an awesome moment for him and the Holiday family. He's 20 years old. Yeah. They they have a video out of the manager down in AAA basically saying, hey, you're doing a good job here and, you know, whatever. And then they say, do me a favor tonight, call your dad and thank him for having you in the clubhouse and all this stuff over the years. And also tell him that now he'll need a pass to get to watch you play. <laughs> That's all awesome. this stuff. Yeah. But he's 20 freaking years old, and the best part about this is he forced his way into the majors. Mm-hmm. He's so stinking good at AAA that they can't even they, they can't even fathom keeping him there. Right. And that's what I talk about all the time about players that go to the minors. Yeah. Play so damn good that you don't belong in that league anymore. Yeah. Force the big team to call you up. Yep. Yeah. Congratulations to. Jackson Holiday. Uh, it was funny as there was a video out as well uh, of Jackson swinging a bat when he's like two or three years old with his dad. At three years old, he had a pure friggin' baseball <laughs> swing. I'm not joking. Uh, I, was, yeah. I looked at it. I was like, oh, my God, a three-year-old has a way better swing than I have as an adult. <laughs> that's what Matt, that's what Matt told us one time because we had asked him. I had asked him after, after Jackson got drafted number one overall. I said, when did you... When did you have a sense that Jackson could could play, you know? And he goes, uh, you know, he, he kind of picked things up pretty quickly. I think he was three or four where he had one of, the, he had one of those, like, balls, balls that he had, like, on a string, yeah. and, and Jackson would swing. And he's like, yeah, I think he was picking it up pretty quick. About three or four, I'm like, holy smokes. Yeah. That's kid just crazy. had an issue, but he's a he's a great kid too, and uh, we we know Matt. Um, we we haven't had an opportunity to met, meet Leslie, but we know of that family and you know you say oh they do it the right way they are hardworking, dedicated uh complete a complete family to that you know jackson holiday is likely a, a leader even at the, at this age so congratulations to that entire family and you're right jamie and he goes to triple a level he hit two, he slashed 291, 429, 470. This is not just, hey, let's try to get the draft pick if he wins rookie of the year, which is what they did last year with Gunnar Henderson. Yeah. He earned a spot. Yeah. And I imagine he's he's not going back down. At least I hope not. If he does, so There's what? There's no chance. They gave him number but, seven to play in the majors. How about that? You mm-hmm. don't give a guy a real number if he's going back down. Yeah. He's going up with like 58 or something like that. Right. And I think that's Cal Ripken Sr.'s number, too. Yeah. How about really? Cal Ripken Jr. sent a, a message to him, a tweet out to Jackson Holiday. Mm-hmm. Welcome to awesome. the family and things like it's that. Incredible. What it, to me, the, the last thing I'll say about this, which is cool, is what people don't understand, maybe some of our listeners don't understand, is that when you're the son of a Cardinals Hall of Famer, a great baseball player who has all this celebrity notoriety, a ton of money, too. Mm-hmm. It is easy to just be a kid that's a, a punk. Yep. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. easy because you have all. You don't need to work hard. You're probably going to get a chance to go play for the best high school. Probably going to go to college. You know, because some of well, it's Matt Holiday's kid or Matt yeah. Holiday picks up the phone and whatever it is, right? It is so easy to be a punk when you come from a great environment like that. But this is, to me, their biggest success between Leslie and Matt is having kids that aren't punks, yeah. that go out there and work hard and live in the barn swinging the baseball bat and doing all this <laughs> stuff. Like, to me, that's the greatest success. I agree. Just been That's outstanding. I'm sure the family is extremely excited to, to see your boy make it to the big leagues and have an opportunity. I mean, watching your kids play is like one of the most nerve-wracking but most exciting things in the world because you can't do it for them, but you're so excited. You're like, ah! 
is, yes, oh, God. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just so many different feelings that come with it. So, you know, hats off to that family, to the, to the Holiday family, and, and congrats to, to them for, uh, for having this opportunity. And to your point, Jamie, about the video, when I was watching it, usually when we see those types of videos, some of the players are, like, overcome <laughs> with emotion, and they're like, oh, my gosh, yes. He was stone He was just, like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, he expected, like he expected to be there. Right. He's like, he's not not no. No. it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Not, not, not no, disrespectful. Not disrespectful. Like, we'll just say this is this, this is what this is the progression of this what is I just expect. the next step. Yep. Right. Yeah. Good for him. Well, speaking of uh, it's about time. It's about time that the uh, Arizona Coyotes get the hell out of Arizona. Uh, hey. The Coyotes. Hey. No, no, no. Let them finish. I'm sorry. They're working on an agreement to sell and relocate to Salt Lake City. Utah, and, uh, well, it's getting pretty damn close because it looks like they're going there. Yeah, so lots of rumors swirling here right now. And not just rumors, there's traction to it, but I don't, you know, nothing is solidified yet. But the outline looks like it would be that the Coyotes would sell the team back to the NHL for a billion dollars. The NHL would buy the team for a billion dollars. Then the NHL would sell said team to the Utah ownership for obviously more than a billion dollars smart because what that does is it raises the valuations of the co- of the, the teams throughout the league now you know 1.3 gets you a franchise now so then when they go back to expansion by the way 1.3 gets you a franchise it used to be 500 million now it's 1.3 and we're talking about six seven years ago wow so that smart move business wise by the nhl Furthermore to this, there also appears to be an agreement in place where the current owner right now of the Coyotes would be allowed to bring a franchise back to Arizona once they build their little Coyote village that we have seen all the renderings. Once that's built and agreed upon, the NHL is basically saying, we will give you a franchise again. Now, probably for a billion dollars. Yeah. But sure, right. whatever the case, right? So you'd end up with a team in Salt Lake that are more than equipped to handle an NHL team. Great market, great hockey area. And, you know, the Arizona market is there, especially if the team can get closer to Scottsdale. Talking to a number of people in the last couple of weeks about the whole thing, and everybody's adamant that if the team was closer to Scottsdale, it would be a phenomenal hit. People would love it. I mean, hockey's huge now in Arizona. It's just not huge in the area that the Coyotes have put arenas. Mm. And it's difficult to get around in Phoenix, greater area like Scottsdale. It takes mm-hmm. you an hour and a half to get from one end of Scottsdale all the way to Glendale where the old rink used to be. Yeah. It's like not ideal. Yeah, and that's where the Cardinals are. It's That's right. Glendale. The, the big hubcap. It's right. right next door. Yeah, that's what I call that thing. Nice. Um, <laughs> big but hubcap. we'll see. You know, we'll see. And apparently Tillman Fertitta who's the owner of the Houston Rockets, was in New York this week along with the ownership group that's petitioning for a team in Atlanta, and those two entities were petitioning for expansion teams. So the NHL could grow quite a bit here in the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. How would that uh, affect, and maybe maybe you don't know this, but I'm just curious from like a record standpoint and a history standpoint, if they do sell the team back to the NHL and then they are granted another team, would the Coyotes and the the Jets like franchise go back to Arizona, or does that continue with Salt Lake? Because that, these are the questions that I want. To yeah, know. Marcy, <laughs> that's way above my pay grade. Ah, okay, I thought maybe you'd know. One would <laughs> one would imagine that it would continue because mm-hmm. you're not killing off the franchise. If the NHL buys the franchise back, it's still the Coyotes franchise. Okay, yeah, I didn't and then know. Then that franchise it... would be sold to a new owner. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, the Jets slash Coyotes slash Utah Utes, whatever the hell they're going to call them, would still be under the, would still be under the same umbrella. Yes. That's Utes. just a guess, of course. What would be a cool name for Utah? Mm. The, 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 the Utah Grizz? Mm. The Grizzlies were an yeah. IHL team way back yeah. then. The Montana Grizz? What? Isn't Montana Grizz? Yeah, but Montana's not in Utah. That's a college it's, it's, team. It's yeah, not. I understand that. But I'm, <laughs> yeah, Jeez, no thanks, uh, Anthony. Well, geography. Here. Jamie, great work on that. Yeah, uh, no. Canadian Marsh, kid stepping up. Isn't it Montana Grizz? Yeah, the Mons. Yeah, yeah, yep. team, right. They were in about uh, Utah. Though. I understand that. I think uh, it's they're going to have their Grizzes. You know. Mm. Oh yeah, are you? Mm-hmm. Well, you wouldn't be able to go back with the Utah Grizzlies. You Why not? You wouldn't. It's a past franchise. You wouldn't do that. What else is in Utah? I don't. I don't know. I've never been there. Mountains. Yeah. I've been jazz. There. I played against the Grizzlies. Maybe not. Way back. They had jazz. You could. You could. So. You could so. do yeah. that. The jazz there. Yeah. That's kind I mean, of weird. You could, but well, the Jets. I mean, they they went back to the Jets, and that's not even their own 
franchise. Yeah, but it was always an NHL franchise. The Utah Grizzlies were IHL. I'm just saying. Jamie. Just trying to find a name. Just trying to find a name. Maybe well, you know, Marcy, the Kodiaks. You know I what saw I'm something doing? on online. Kodiaks Utah could Kodiaks. be Kodiaks. Then, Marcy, that's all I'm trying to do is push you to be better. Well, I okay? appreciate that. I know you're creative. And Thank you. going back to a name that was already there, not very creative. <laughs> I'm just trying <laughs> to uh, be nostalgic. You know? <laughs> it's one way of looking at it. like the uh, Utah Elk. Mm. Uh, that elk. sounds slow. What about the Salt Lake Stalters? Anthony's uh, new favorite team. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, what about the Utah Mule Deers? Nah. Why do they have to be Utah? What if Salt Lake? Yes, yeah, Salt, Salt Lake. Lake Pronghorns. <laughs> Are you looking up uh, the, 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 the top animal. animals in Utah? Yeah. Oh, here we go. The Utah or the Salt Lake bighorn sheep. Oh. I don't I don't know. I mean. What is the mascot? It's got a like? ring like to it. Like a ram. It. It's a sheep with one big horn. Okay. No. That'd be hey. nice. Nah. The Salt Lake black bears. Nah. Getting better. Salt Lake City bears. The Salt Lake City Salt bears. Lake City. Uh. Black-footed ferret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna what say. Does the Salt Lake have any cougars? Yes, yeah, I'm do. sure there's a few. Yeah, there. they do. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 See, that's what you do. Also known as the panther mountain lion. Mm. Yeah, or the catamount. The catamount, the catamount. Or, or the Ooh, puma. That's Vermont. Uh, Vermont the puma. Catamount. Yeah, yeah. Puma. Yeah, yeah, the pumas. Salt Lake pumas. Salt Lake pumas. Mm. Utah pumas. Utah pumas. I think we solved it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Call yeah. us. We're available. Wait. <laughs> I got it. The Salt Lake City long-tailed weasels. Ah, <laughs> fairly popular out there. All right, it's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Would trading Jordan Bennington speed up the Blues retool? We'll tell you why it wouldn't. Better check yourself. That's next on 101. <laughs> Let me finish the tease first. That's next on 101 ESPN. If you're off today, rainy day, cloudy day here in St. Louis, why don't you head out to Auto Center Center Herculaneum. If you need a vehicle, they're thrilled to start their fresh start program this month. It's a perfect way to save money throughout the course of April while also taking advantage of new Nissan deals like 0% APR and payment terms all the way up to 84 months. At Auto Center's Nissan, they also have up to $5,000 off MSRP and no down payments needed with three months of no payments. You can give your wallet a break, save your tax money, and get a great deal on a brand new Nissan Pathfinder or Ultima or Rogue. Whatever you're looking for, Auto Center's Nissan, they've got them. And they got them all in one location. Seven, over 700 vehicles all in one spot. It's truly your ultimate car buying destination. When you head out to Herculaneum, tell them Stalter sent you. Ask them about their 30-day return promise, their complimentary lifetime warranty on all new Nissans. If you're looking for pre-owned vehicles, they've got different makes and models, too. It's not just Nissans at Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. You'll find it there. If you're in search of a new car, great. Head out to Herculaneum again. Tell them Stalter sent you. Start at AutoCenter'sNissan.com.
304 in the fast lane. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Elliot Friedman talked about Bennington on the 32 Thoughts podcast recently, and he said he, as in Jordan Bennington, he's got a no trade clause that goes to a partial no trade. I think it's two thirds of the league next year. So his full no trade cl- trade drops. I would be curious about what Armstrong would do here because he's got value. It might you, it might be your best chance to get something. We posed the question: Would Jordan Bennington speed up the Blues retool? I actually think it would start. It, it would set them back further, and that's got nothing to. That's no knock on Hofer. Jordan Bennington's an, an elite goaltender. Do I have that wrong, Jamie? No. Okay. So I'm not trading away the only reason, or or I'm sorry, not the only reason, the biggest reason why I still am not mathematically eliminated yeah. on April 10th, and I don't see his play dropping off. You know, this is a situation. This the isn't contrary. Right. This isn't a situation, Jamie, where the next couple of years, next year specifically, you could see a massive drop off. And then it's like, let's get ahead of this. Rather be one year too late than or I'm sorry, one one year too soon than one year too late. I don't see that with Pennington. No, look, at he's your MVP. Elliot Friedman. Yeah, look, Elliot does a good job. But what people have to understand is the insiders like Elliot Friedman, they say things. You know why they say them, Anthony? So people talk about them. Sure. It's called clicks. Right. It's called downloads to your podcast. Mm -hmm. Right? (laughs) Yep. That's it. Solid tease. Never heard anybody. (laughs) Pretty much. Well, anyways. So, look, in theory, what Elliot Friedman is saying, in theory, could work. But here's the problem you have, is that Joel Hofer this year might get to 30 games played. Do you think that qualifies him for 50 starts next year? I do not. I don't either. You've got Jordan Bennington here with three more years following this year. If you were ever going to consider moving Jordan Bennington, it would probably be after 25-26, before his last season here. That's That's what I'm thinking. You don't get rid of one of the best goalies in the NHL. He's on a team that's mathematically not in the playoffs right now. Yeah. On a team that probably won't make the playoffs, yet people are talking about him in the Vezina Trophy category. Mm -hmm. People are talking about him as being one of the three goalies for Canada's Olympic team next year. That's That's no joke. Three of the best goalies in the world. Right. Why would you trade him? I I just, there's no way. And and let alone from, from the whole that standpoint let's bring the fan base into it now this fan base has lost ryan o'reilly david perron alex petrangelo craig berube imagine jordan bennington now all in a short period of time when you know that jordan bennington's a blue collar dude he's the guy throwing a left hook around ross johnson's head to protect a teammate yeah and then mm-hmm. standing on his head in the last part of the game and pitching a shutout in the shootout you don't trade guys like that. Well, it's it, Gary. It's about culture too, right? I mean, it's yeah. not. It's not just yeah, about. He's a huge part of it. Yes, it's not just if, if you're going to build a winner. We we just got done talking about UConn yesterday, following their victory over Purdue mm-hmm. to make it back to back national championships. It, it is about culture more than anything. So if you trade him, are you prepared to shake up the culture? Well, if you trade him, you're you're. <laughs> What he's done this season has been outstanding. I think you're putting yourself in a worse position going into next year than you are than you were this year. Yeah. Uh, my question to you, Jamie, and, and I do not agree that he should be traded. My question to you is, what is Joe Hofer's ceiling, and could he potentially be a piece that you would trade? I mean, I, I know it's great to have both of those guys, but it, there are there are needs on this roster, and so if you have great goaltending, and you have a position where you have a surplus, could that be a person that? could possibly be traded for some help maybe a defenseman maybe somebody that a third line whatever you need i wouldn't do that either quite honestly because he comes in at a real good price tag Mm -hmm. you're not overspending like your goalie totals for salary right now (laughs) is 6.7 million dollars that's all the team were to offer something that you were you know an offer you just could not well then well look wayne gretzky got traded yeah right so there's always an offer that's good enough to Mm -hmm. make you trade a player and but it would have to really be amazing because then you're gonna have to go find another goaltender right, right 
and Joel Holfer makes seven seventy five for this season and next season. And we get a couple of texts here, and this always aggravates me. It's the anti Bennington crowd, right? From the nine eight zero elite goaltender. I think not. You all are really over exaggerating how Jordan, how good Jordan Bennington is for a guy that's only known to be a playoff goaltender. I don't qualify that as elite. Okay, well, let me do this just for the heck of it. Connor Hellebuck, who is the favorite to win the Vezina Trophy this year. Mm -hmm. Guys, what do you think his save percentage is? 918. Close. Uh, 922. Okay. I was going to say 23. Let's say right. 945. Guys, 920. <laughs> okay? Now, Connor Hellebuck plays on one of the best teams in the league. What do you think Jordan Bennington's save percentage is? I'll say 914. I'll say 917. 19. It's 911. It's gone down. The Anaheim game hurt him a little bit, but it was, it was 915 <clears throat> heading into that. So you have... That small margin between the Vesna Trophy favorite on a really good team mm -hmm. and Jordan Bennington, who's on an inconsistent team and putting up those kinds of saves. Sure. And he's also seen a lot more shots than most of the goalies. Hellebuck is the only guy, Hellebuck and Gorgiev, Georgiev are the only two guys with more shots on net than Jordan Bennington. So he's been abused as well. Mm. So this is that's my only pushback to people what? who think that He's not an elite goaltender. He's not just a playoff guy. Why do you think people wind up going? Like, what is the narrative then? I don't know. It's some people, like, I think, what, don't what like his we... antics, which, by the way, he hasn't had any antics this year. The other day, he was saving a teammate's bacon. Mm -hmm. He jumped I, in to save Walker. I didn't have a problem with the antics that they were complaining about last some year. Guy, some people was, get all he wholesome was, about there it. There is a level of... of when you are a professional athlete, when you're an athlete in general, you have a competitive nature. And sometimes it goes over the the, the top where you don't want it to go. But it, it's you just being competitive. And, you know, him, uh, what did he do last year? Was rallying up, look, r pumping his fist at one of the benches as he oh, was skating yeah. off. So what? I, I didn't have a problem with that. You yeah. want... I think sometimes fans just want you to just do your job and shut up and don't say, <laughs> yeah, no, they're people. They have emotions. They have times where they do go over the top. And it wasn't a situation where anyone was, it was too egregious. I just felt like last year wouldn't, it didn't seem that crazy to me what he was doing at that time. And he wanted to win. That's a yeah. guy that I want on my team because it's he wants line, to win. Right? It's yes. the bottom line. Yeah. I want a guy who wants to win. And I, I as far as the antics and all that go, Jordan Bennington's still maturing as a goalie. He's done a lot of work on ice, off ice. I'm sorry. He's going to be one of the goalies for Team Canada in the Olympics. And apart from maybe one or two other goalies in the NHL, any team in the league would want him while they go on a Stanley Cup quest. Mm -hmm. And the grass isn't always greener on the other side. We talk about Joel Hofer and, oh, maybe he could be the starting goaltender right now. Maybe he will in the future. I'm, I hope he will because he, he's a solid netminder. But we had the conversation a few years ago about, is it Jordan Bennington? Is it Billy Huso? Right? Mm -hmm. Billy Huso has not really done anything since he's left St. Louis. His save percentage has been under 900. Right. He's not what we thought he could be ever since that playoff series. So... The grass is not always greener. If you do end up getting rid of Jordan Bennington, perhaps Joel Hofer can't take that mantle. I hope he does when Bennington does eventually leave St. Louis, but you just never know. And yeah. so you got to go with the guy that, that is a for sure thing, and that's what Jordan Bennington is right now. Jamie's going to get started to get frustrated. Would you like to sound off again, or should we no, move the, forward? The 980 just says it has nothing to do with his antics, which is fine. Okay. He, says he loves Jordan Bennington. He wished he was on his favorite team, the Hurricanes. And then goes on to say, it's just he's a good goaltender, not elite. But if you want to go off one year, that's fine as well. What year do you want to pick? Right. Do you want to pick the Stanley Cup year? Or the COVID he, year. Well, yeah. The, the following year, he had 30 wins. Mm -hmm. The Blues were number one in the Western Conference. Jordan Bennington's numbers were off the charts. Yeah. And in 2019, his numbers were off the charts. And then this year here, on a substandard team, compared to what those other two teams were, He's still putting up elite numbers. Yep. So I just don't know how he's not qualified as elite. He went in and won you a playoff series and then damn near beat the Colorado Avalanche with a team that was half as good. Sure. If he doesn't get hurt, who knows? If he does, so, I, Naylor nearly stole game one in that series. Yeah. If you want to split hairs on really good and elite, fine. Yeah. You can have your 
not your argument, your point of view. And I'm not here to say you can't. But I'm just looking at it. I see these NHL guys. I see the goalies every night. I watch games. And every other night I'm in a building watching our goalies and other goalies and the effect and the impact of a goalie within their own team. And Jordan Bennington, to me, has had the biggest impact on his team than any other goalie this year in the NHL. It's Jamie Rivers, Kerry Davis. I'm Anthony Stoltz. It's a fast lane on 101 ESPN. We're going to play Prove Me Wrong next. So if you've got a Prove Me Wrong statement, 314-399-9646 of the Air Comfort Service text line. We'll enter the, uh, not the offices, but the courtroom of mm-hmm. Judge Andrew Marsh next on 101 ESPN. With over two decades of family ownership and operation, my friends over at E&B Granite here in St. Louis, they are the trusted name when it comes to renovations for your kitchen, your bathroom, uh, and your outdoor living spaces. E&B Granite offers an amazing selection of custom countertops, cabinets, flooring, and all. They, they cater to different tastes, too. They also have a variety of colors, patterns, styles, Everything that's guaranteed to bring new life into your living space, whether the kitchen, the bathroom, or outdoors, uh, they do a great job. They're they're also backed by a skilled team of professional fabricators, installers, in-house design staff. Uh, E&B Granite ensures top-notch craftsmanship, personalized service, and prices you won't find in those big box stores. So please go down and visit them at 6135 Manchester Avenue. Walk in. The showroom's awesome. You're going to get a chance to talk to the sales representative. They're going to help you out tremendously. And then you can even go look at all of the countertops in the back, and you can pick exactly what you're looking for. And it's right there on site. I love E&B Granite. They are always my first call when it comes to kitchens, bathrooms, outdoor spaces. Make them your call. Give them a call at 314-645-9300. Again, that's 314-645-9300, or you can always visit them at enbgranite.com.
Prove me wrong, kids. Prove me wrong. That's right. Time for Prove Me Wrong here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter. We are inside now the courtroom of the Honorable Judge Andrew Marsh. Great guy he is. He certainly he's is. Such a great guy. Handsome fella. Yeah. You know, such common get sense. Wearing those glasses he's, lately. He's been doing a fantastic job. Man. He's got that look again of the guy that's in the van nah. working on shutting nah. off the cameras nah. for nah. us inside the bank. See, I got mm-hmm. a little different, different vibe van. today. Mm-hmm. Really? Marshy. To me, he looks like a French painter that has his canvas set up right underneath the Eiffel Tower, like, mm. and just painting away. Yeah, you see him see sipping that. on like a little espresso. Mm. Okay, mm. right? You get That's that? Interesting. I can see that. Yeah. Yep. I like yeah either it. way, he's doing either a great way, job. handsome as ever. Yeah. Mm. Yep. All right, uh, <laughs> you guys are screwed today. Uh oh. <laughs> what do we have? for our first case. From the 636, prove me wrong, Mizzou's basketball team will make it to the final 32 of next year's NCAA tournament. I mean, I mean, I I would have to say that's probably wrong. I I don't know if they, are they still in the SEC? I don't know because they didn't win any games. Oh, well, not in the SEC, they didn't. No, they didn't. They got regulated. Yeah, they didn't do a great job. Oh, they they, are they relegated. Relegated. Regulated. Regulated. (laughs) They they, were regulated to be. Where did they go? Nope, that doesn't work. Uh, Just hit the buzzer now. The Mac. (laughs) Yeah, they, so, yeah, no, I mean, they didn't do a great job last year. I know they have a recruiting class that's supposed to be great, um, but, you know, it's so many great teams out there. To make it to the to the second round of the tourney, you're asking a lot. I mean, hell, to make it into the tourney, you're asking. Now, Indiana State, your favorite team, Judge Marsh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, <laughs> mm. didn't make the tourney, and they should have. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, just to get into the tournament is going to be a tough task. So if you're not in, there's no way you're going to make it to the round of 32. So that's where I believe uh, the Missouri Tigers will end up. That's their fate. Yeah, everything you said was spot on. You actually could have just said no, and I would have given you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. No. Uh, from the 618, prove me wrong. Edie out of Purdue will be an NBA bust. All right. Follow, follow me on this one here. <laughs> Zach Edie, who scored, what, 37 points, Gary? Uh, on, yeah, on, championship uh, game. On Monday night yep. against UConn, who has won back-to-back national championships. He got not one but two of UConn's bigs in foul trouble, yeah. one of one of which fouled out. Klingon had only one more personal foul to give, or else he would have fouled out as well. They could not stop that shot. I realize that the NBA is all about the small, you know, the, the small three-point yeah. shooters and all that. There's a team named the Minnesota Timberwolves, who have decided to zig while everybody else is zagging and go big. And Carrie, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I look at the standings here, I believe the Minnesota Timberwolves are the number one team in the Western Conference. Uh, yeah, right now they are. Yeah, they're doing a great job. If other teams start to pick up on this, they could go big as well. And Zach Eady, who does have a good shot, who is... What seven something? Seven four five. Diff- play, played the most minutes by the way in the entire NCAA tournament. Mm. They could look at him and Durable. say, you know, what? hey, this is a solid NBA player. Yep. I think we're selling Zach Eady short. I'm with you there. Which is crazy because again, he's like seven five, he's he's a giant. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I just don't like that you brought up the Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> who have been notoriously terrible in the playoffs. Also, that city just can't seem to win anything. Trust me, I know. I'll give it to you, Anthony. He yeah, complimented you know. me today. <laughs> Knew that would come in handy. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, right, this, Judge. This one, <laughs> this one's going to be interesting. From the 314, prove me wrong. Mo is a better GM than Doug Armstrong. The Blues championship window vanished like a fart in the wind. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Mo is a better GM than Armstrong. wrong. Oh, oh, wrong. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That one's easy. Uh, just check the track record. How many words do I really need to use at this point? Look at what w- the latest championship in 2019. Doug Armstrong built that. He signed the right guys, made the right trades. And, and 
if nothing else, Army shrewd at times. To where, how many times in the past have we seen the Cardinals hang on to guys for too long? The Paul DeYoungs, the Matt Carpenters, and the nostalgic thing. Heck, let's bring them back again. The Matt Carpenters and the Lance Lynns and like. That would that doesn't happen with Doug Armstrong. The only guy it's ever happened with is David Perron. That's because David Perron just wants to be in St. Louis. He won't go away, so Army keeps bringing him back, which we might see him again soon. Never know. But no, for me, it's not even close. Army communicates with the fan base, lets them know exactly what the plan is. You wouldn't have Doug Armstrong skip an end-of-the-year press conference or just, just eliminate it because he doesn't want to face the questions mm. from the, the media or talk to the public about it. You certainly wouldn't have ever seen a Wilson Contreras situation happen to where this guy's being thrown under the bus by his teammates. That would have been handled internally by the team, by the players, by Doug Armstrong. There... You may not like everything Doug Armstrong does, but everything he does is for the betterment of the team. And that is where sometimes it sucks because you end up losing good players or players that you like, but it's all because Army's trying to consistently keep the team better, keep the team winning. He won't even call it a rebuild. He calls it a retool because he wants to keep this team winning. And that's the biggest thing for me. So for me, it's not even close. I mean, Army hands down. Hmm. We'll it was pretty good. And it was a press conference. I think you sold him on that press yeah. conference. Well, who had ducks one the season? Like, yeah. come on. Hmm. He even had one midseason. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're going to have this. Mm -hmm. All right. We have stuff to talk about. Yeah. I already know where this one's going, but from the 314, prove me wrong. The teams in the National League Central, the teams in the National League Central, are better than we may have assumed them to be. And the Cardinals won't finish higher than third in the division, which is an improvement from last season. If I may. Please do. Yeah, man. Judge, we seem to be, um, we seem to, to not see the forest through the trees when it comes to the National League Central. If we merely look beyond the National League Central, we'll, we would actually see real baseball teams that actually put together uh, competitive teams from top to bottom. Now, of course, you don't get that in every division from top to bottom, but in most divisions outside of the Central in both leagues, you're talking about at least three teams that, that are competitive, that are legit wildcard teams. In the National League Central, you like your Pittsburgh Pirates who continue to blow games? You like your Milwaukee Brewers, who, as soon as somebody starts to play well, they trade them to another team because they don't want to pay them. Mm. You like your Cincinnati Reds, where ownership literally said, what else are you going to watch? <laughs> Go ahead and show up to the park and watch this crap because you got nothing else going on. Mm. You like those two? You like those teams? You like the Cubs, who put more stock into their manager higher than actually signing players that... Uh, you know, putting together a complete roster. Come on. And no stock into their opening day pyrotechnics. Correct. Oh. Thank you, Jamie. Well, you got sparklers out there on your home <laughs> opener? Give me a break. <laughs> this National League Central is not better than what we think. It's all a mirage. Horrible timing, too, with this. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the judge for his ruling. Just horrible timing. Uh, is it, though? It actually <sighs> supports your case. That's true. There you go. You don't have to be good. Case in point, this Cardinals team can't score more than three runs. There you go. That's your team. That's your solution that's in the National League Central. That's your great division. Yeah. <sighs> Not today. Yeah, Anthony, I think you were talking about the other teams in the National League Central who are all over 500. There's only one team over 500 in the NL West. Only one team over that's 500 in the NL exactly. East. And uh, you're going to get the Son X. Of a it's a soon, new year. It's a new I, year. I knew as soon as the judge spun around in his seat and looked, looked up and up. saw final <laughs> Phillies 4-3 over the Cardinals at Bush Stadium. How, how did it become a final, Anthony? Goldie. Double nope. play. Jordan Walker. Oh, it was a Walker? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was Goldie. No, it was Jordan Walker. Jordan uh, Walker. Launch Either angle way. straight into the ground again? Yeah, you got to work on it. Uh, Clearly. It's all but your the ball fault, plays, Anthony. All Sorry. Anytime Anthony starts to talk, the Cardinals lose. <laughs> it's true. It's happened <laughs> it's twice happened already twice. this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that was nice. That was a nice way to end. Prove me wrong. Uh, let's get into this Cardinals game. 4-3 losers today against the Phillies. They dropped the series. Some good, some bad. We'll get into all next on 101 ESPN.
Gentlemen, we're talking about the NBA and so many great games coming up down the stretch. And, Kerry, I know you're super excited for the playoffs coming around. But right now, FanDuel, you bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay every Thursday with TNT Thursdays. And the best part is it doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or if you have an account. Kerry, you get bonus bets back if your same-game parlay doesn't win on NBA on TNT games. Yeah, Jamie, the NBA same-game parlays are a perfect way to combine your bets for a chance to score a bigger pay day however you want to play just head to fanduel.com slash fast to bet on the nba with a no sweat same game parlay with tnt thursdays the lakers warriors a bunch of teams as i said in the west vying to get to that eighth seed that seventh seed that sixth they are trying they're all fighting and it's going to come down to the final game of the season more than likely and you can play it all at fanduel but you do got to visit fanduel.com and use our promo code fast so fanduel.com slash fast and then you can make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 or older and present in Illinois. Minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued is not with trouble. Bonus bets which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Blues back in action tonight, taking on the Chicago Blackhawks. Pre-game starts at 6. Puck drop is at 7. We'll talk with Jeremy Rutherford in the 5 o'clock hour, so stay tuned for that. The Cardinals just lost to the Phillies 4-3. We're going to dive into 
today's game coming up next. So stay tuned. We'll also talk with Brad Thompson at 415. So stay tuned for that as well. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling, independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. just told you in the sports center update the cardinals fall to the phillies today four to three they lose the series against the phillies sunny gray gave them an opportunity to win the series coming into today but unfortunately uh the cardinals fall things started off rocky for lance lynn and the cardinals it wasn't it wasn't all on lynn in the first inning as victor scott had a ball go off his glove and that led to eventually led to two runs but the cardinals battle back Ivana Ivan herrera another home run he hits one 432 feet off of aaron nola to make it two to one in the bottom of the second an inning later brendan donovan golfed one out down the right right field line for his I think his second home run of the year to make it 2-2 but the Phillies would add two in the top of the six when Andre Palante had a rocky inning Zach Thompson came in and did a really nice job he was in kind of a fireman role where he scattered four hits but didn't allow a run in three and a third struck out six in the process so two rough starts for Zach Thompson but his first outing when it comes to a reliever he did great an Arenado single to center made it 3-1 or made it 4-3 excuse me in the bottom of the eighth but in the bottom of the ninth Jordan Walker grounded into a double play despite the Cardinals getting the first runner on and the Cardinals lose 4-3 today Lance Lynn five innings of work gave up just one hit no earned runs four walks six Ks so you had another competitive start from your starter you had another opportunity because of the pitching staff and the defense to get yourself a win and they just did not get enough timely hits did not figure out Aaron Nola outside of the two home the two solo shots and you lose again four to three so now you're six and seven on the year three and three at home and then you head up head back on the road for Arizona your biggest thoughts your biggest thought your biggest takeaway I don't know if I have a huge takeaway because I feel like this is exactly what I expect from the Cardinals this year Mm -hmm. you said it in the break for me I anticipated a blues-like season for the Cardinals where you're not going to have these, you know, huge losing streaks. You're not going to have these big winning streaks. You're going to put one or two or three together. You're going to lose two. You're going to win three. You're going to lose three. You're going to win one, lose one. Like, Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be like that all season. So when I see a series against a really good team like the Phillies that had two aces, going, you know, their second game and the third game, and then Turnbull looked like a damn ace when he was pitching in game one. <laughs> yeah. I know he isn't, but he had a heck of a yeah. game. And you managed to get, you go into this last game and you lose by a run. Like, I was, I, I'm disappointed because I want to see the Cardinals win, but I'm not like, oh, man, I can't believe they're losing. Like, I'm just like, yeah, they, I, oh, yeah, they lost to the Phillies. Yeah, figured. Yeah. I, that's me. I'm indifferent already. Uh, is that good? No, no, it's no. terrible, Kerry. Right. Right. I don't like this version of me at all. <laughs> not a good feeling, I'm sure, and not a good state of mind. I mean, they well, they've won yeah. two series, they've lost two series, and I think I agree with Jamie. It's it's kind of, I guess, the expectation. We we have gotten better pitching than I think we thought we would. I think that's good. Andre Palante got roughed up a little bit, didn't get out of his inning, but I think. You know, there are some things here and there that need to be corrected. At some point, you know, you got to get the bats going. You got to get guys being consistent, scoring one run. You got to put some crooked numbers in an inning up and and to have success. And so, you know, one run here, one run in the second, one run in the third, Mm -hmm. and then another one in the eighth, I believe. You got to be able to get runners on and move guys over. You know, a lot of double plays. Jordan Walker ended the game on a double play. Like, you just have to – you got to do better when your opportunities are presented. And I think right now – Again, it's early, and I'm sure that's the the answer that everyone will say. Oh, it's early, it's early. Carry I think you lost the series to uh, <laughs> Philly, and most people assume that you would. You lost the series to L.A., which most people, most people thought you would. You went and won the series in San Diego, which most people didn't think you would. So are they 
right where we thought they would be. I'm, I'm kind of like Jamie, <laughs> indifferent. <laughs> Come on board, buddy. Is Plenty it room? room? Yeah, All right, yeah. Here I come. Room. I'm on my way. We gotta, we're going to get a bus this time. I feel like there's going to be a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> I think my main takeaway, at least from today's game, was that Victor Scott has probably played his last game at this yeah. point in time before Newt Barr comes back. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, the air, I guess I wasn't watching, but... He got a single got and a then kind of turned left and yeah. into the base path and, and got tagged Which I believe out. was the same inning that they scored one run. Uh, yeah, I think so. So yeah. right there, that could be a tie game. Yeah. So not that one game should decide whether or not you get sent down, but I think the, the body of work, and yeah. it kind of led to this moment. I think he needs to go down to AAA, get some hacks there, and then come back and be a different ball player. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be on this road trip because Newt Bar, here's the update on Newt Bar. They sent, they sent him, because he got the rib injuries, they sent him to on a rehab assignment to AA Springfield. Now, he was seen taking batting practice on Monday, but and this was, that was prior to the first game against the Phillies. But it looks like he's, he's going to need a couple of ABs in AA. Maybe he joins the Cardinals at some point in Arizona this weekend, but you may see... The, you know Victor Scott on the road this this week, but ultimately Marsh, you're right. Once Newpar comes back, that's going to be your first move. He's going to replace Newpar is going to replace Victor Scott, and then when Dylan Carlson eventually comes back, that's going to be your answer for for our guy super bad. Mm. Or it could be a situation where they send Pahis down because you still got him on the roster too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I would just wonder if Victor when if and when he gets sent down. What does that look like for him coming back? I mean, at, at that point, you're probably looking at waiting on more injuries, you know, yeah. to happen because the outfield will be so crowded at that point, there will be no room for him. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, maybe an injury in the outfield or maybe an injury in, in the infield somewhere where Brendan Donovan is now playing in the infield somewhere. But I, I just think if he does get sent down, which is unfortunate because I, I think the defense, it plays. He made a – a bonehead mistake in the outfield, but I think that was a pretty tough ball with the with the rain and all those that things. That stuff but happens. It happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Physical just, are just the inability to hit in the way that he needs to right now, it's a it's really tough on him. And the one thing that can happen, and you know, Jamie, we talk about this all the time. The um, the confidence that you have when you're a professional athlete is really what allows you to succeed. Your physical talent is is that, but if you lose confidence. You are you are behind the eight ball, and it be, it can become really bad, and you don't want to do that to a young player. So, having him go down at some point to get some success, to hit some, to, to actually see a ball hit and get on base, and be able to use all of his athleticism, I think would be really good for him. I agree. I think, look, it's one thing to have the great defense, and the error today it is what it is. All Gold Glovers have errors. It just it happens, but. When you piggyback it on to hitting below 100 in the majors, like that's your problem. Mm-hmm. And where is the where is the path to success? If I'm the Cardinals and I'm Ollie Marmol or John Mozeliak or anybody on that staff, I'm looking at Victor Scott the second, going, okay, so where's the path to success? Just keep throwing him out there and have him not hit the ball, because it's not going to get better; it'll get worse. Right. Because baseball is a lot of the psychological side too. Like mm-hmm. Kerry said, the confidence thing. When you're going up there and you don't expect to hit the ball, guess what? You're not about to hit the ball. Right. So he needs to go down and have some success, and it doesn't have to be massive offensive numbers. It just has to be respectable enough to where you can look at him in the line and goes, ah, the guy doesn't hurt us offensively, yeah, but right now work. he is. Right. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I was excited. I, w- I thought the Cardinals did the, the thing that they should have done, which was bring him up when you had the injury to, to Dylan Carlson on the fi- in the final week of spring training. I was excited. I wanted them to give him, you know, a, a, a decent runway. They, they kind of have. He, yeah. need, he needed a pop right away. He didn't have to hit 500, but right. he needed to do a lot more than what he did in order to stick because you knew these outfielders were eventually going to come back in April. And unfortunately, just he... he, he Right now, he can't hit, hit big league pitching. It's not an indictment on his entire career. Mm-hmm. As we talked about yesterday, I had, I had Jordan Walker in my head. I'm like, you know what? This is somebody that only had a month or so of, of AAA. Victor Scott, as you guys know, he skipped AAA last year. So that's a big jump. 
He'll be fine overall, but he's got to refine his game. Uh, speaking of Jordan Walker, we got a text from the 618. Jordan Walker is a triple-A outfielder right now. Why send Scott down? It's one error. Neither Walker or Scott are hitting, but the defense isn't comparable. Yeah, you're, you're cherry-picking the one thing here. We, yeah. we, we brought up the error because it just it's part of the full story. The full story is that Victor Scott has not been getting on base consistently. Now, I know Jordan Walker has neither, but look, Jordan Walker's got almost a full big league season. Season. So you, you can't just compare what we've saw over the first two weeks. You have to compare what Jordan Walker did a year ago as well and factor that in. Now, is he a veteran where he's going to get, you know, half a season to figure it out? No, but Jordan Walker and Victor Scott are, are not comparable to me at this point. If you just want to narrow it down the last two weeks, I mean, even even so, Victor Scott, he's, he hasn't done enough, unfortunately. I can't wait to watch him at the big league level again when he is – he is ready. We thought maybe he's ready. Now he's not. Yeah. I agree. Marshy's not convinced. Well, uh, no, no. I, I think he needs to Marshy send down. To extend, but I think two things can be true. That uh, Jordan Walker does not look good right now. No, he doesn't. No, you're right. Yeah. He does. So. But the organization already knows that oh, for Jordan sure. Walker is miles ahead as far as where he stands in the depth chart. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to disagree with that at yeah. all. But, yeah, you know, I'm not, something not, needs to happen with hey, him. This isn't a negative thing. Everything's oh they're being, oh, poor they're picking on Victor. No, no. Well, you said the, to jump on the bus. You know, well, no, di- that was the that the, was a different the bus. team. Oh, that, that was, was the the, uh, yeah, the, bus. the roller coaster yeah, bus. Yeah, well, yeah, we're going down like, right now. Like we're getting ready coasters. to go up, and now yeah. 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 I'm just going saying, down. Right. young players going down to the minors and, and developing and continuing to have success, like that's for the greater good of the team in the future. Mm-hmm. If you just if you want to hang on because you think oh he's fast and I like this guy and I don't care. Well, you're not helping him, and ultimately, he's not going to be able to help your team. Right. So it, it, you got to continuously develop these young guys. Jamie's keys to victory tonight for the Blues against the Blackhawks and our first goal of the game. That's coming up next in Jamie's final segment of the day here on 101 ESPN. Next week, I'm looking forward to one of my favorite broadcasts that we do. We're going to go to the Missouri Athletic Club downtown. It's the College Basketball Writers Association's Award. So we're looking forward to talking to the men and women that made a huge impact in the uh, landscape of college basketball. But when it comes to that night specifically, boy, the Missouri Athletic Club, they do a great job downtown of hosting events like that. Jamie has remarked before about the Blues events that they've hosted at the Missouri Athletic Club downtown. And they, they always do it right. Everything's perfect. Everything's to the nine. The food is incredible. The hosts are always great. When it comes to Missouri Athletic Club, again, they, they do it right downtown. But when it comes to the West Clubhouse, that's my spot to go work out and get the family involved. I love it. That's my MAC. It's Missouri Athletic Club.
Jamie Rivers is going to head downtown here in a little bit for Bally Sports Midwest coverage of the Blues and Blackhawks. Of course, you can listen to the game right here on 101 ESPN, starting with our pregame show. Alex Ferrario, uh, Chris Kerber, Joe Vitale will take you up to puck drop for Blues and Blackhawks tonight. Jamie Rivers, though, before he heads out, he's got his keys to victory tonight. Yeah, so for the Blues, it's pretty simple. Don't play down to your competition tonight. Chicago Blackhawks, though, have been playing better lately. I think they had eight wins in their last 15 games, which is not extraordinary, but compared to what they were, yeah. uh, they've got some guys back in the lineup playing pretty well. But again, don't take your opponent lightly. Second key is to have a good first period. You know, when the Blues have a good first period, good couple first shifts, the energy's different in the building, the energy's different for the team. For me, it's essential that they get to their game quickly tonight. Tonight, you have to dominate the front of the net, both defensively and offensively. You know, Jake Neighbors out of the lineup. You need more guys stepping up. Get to that front of the net. Make sure you're causing that chaos. If you don't do that, I mean, you could be screwed, really. Hey, Chicago's going to, they're, they're not an extremely talented team, but they will test you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've got some guys that will crash to the front of the net. So you got to be ready to compete. And last, you'll manage the turnovers tonight. They, They've got Connor Bedard. They've got some guys that can turn and burn. They have a team that's pretty loose. They've got nothing to lose. So if you turn the puck over, they're going to head north in a hurry on you. And you're still in this thing. I know there's magic numbers and all this stuff that happened, but just keep winning hockey games. Put the pressure on another team. Right now, the Vegas Golden Knights sit five points ahead of you. Are they going to get in? Yeah, they're probably going to get in. But there is a small chance that they don't. And the more you win, the more pressure you can put on the teams that are ahead of you. That pressure is real. You never know what can happen. So for me, it's it's going out there with that win the game mentality. Don't just be like, oh, let's get these games over with and head to you know, Mexico or whatever. No, win these games. Hmm. Hmm. No? Oh, I was just, we've seen that mentality before. Whoa, what do you say, Marsh? Huh? <laughs> I don't no, what, what are you saying? What are you I'm saying? just saying. Are you talking about Columbus Blue Jackets? Nah, I mean, it sounded like that's what nah, you were referring to. Nah, for the All Star break. Yeah. It, I mean, it has happened. It has happened. So I'm saying it's happened. You know, Columbus was playing well at the time. Yeah, know so were the Blues. Yeah. Uh, the Blues were playing really well. Yeah, no, they were hey, I'll not, say, yeah. no, they had won one game in 13. Sure. The Blues yeah. were playing really well at the time. Hey, they, no, were, uh, they, they struggled. The time. Listen, the Blues struggle with those teams they that struggle against um, bad teams? are underrated <sighs> by the standings. Like the Sharks. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah, Blue right. Jackets. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Sharks yeah. are a Stanley Cup contender. They play against the Blues. Uh, okay, Marsh. Why don't you just, well, I didn't see, you, you said know, that the other day. Why don't you? you? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. And if I, I did, I down. said it in the office. Uh, no, you said it on the air. Doesn't translate to in here. Why don't we get to that first call? All right. <laughs> Let's go, boys. We need you to score more goals. Get those loose pucks. Thomas to Cairo. Score! Goal! No big deal. Game winner. All right, uh, I think Jamie's still in the lead, right? Do we do we step stats on this? We should. The season ain't over. Jamie has four. Does he have four? I have three. Oh wow! Oh, you I guys, have do I have two? any? Or one? I think has three too. I thought. Do I? I think I, I only have one all yeah. year. I think I got two. Well, you have a few more games left. Yeah. No, I feel good about it, Marsh. Yeah, you should. Mm-hmm. All right, Marsh. Or uh, Jamie, go ahead. Uh, I'm going with the captain. Braden Shen, he's playing on the wing with Robert Thomas and Zach Bolduc. They were buzzing around last game. Obviously scored the first shift. Bolduc did 11 seconds in. Um, I think they got another one in them tonight. I think Braden Shen gets the first one. I'm going to go with Robert Thomas. Chalk, 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 chalk. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. I'm going to go with my guy. My my, my guy is out. You know, my I know. Guy, I know. Like a good neighbor. Uh, State Farm, sir. I'm going to go with my other guy, Lexi Torchenko. Mm. Oh, he's my guy. Well, he's not Peter. now. He's mine. The players. I was going to take him. Oh, uh, you're not now. You got a bunch of other guys to choose from. Man. Yeah, Anthony. Jamie, who'd you take? Braden Shen. Marsh, who'd you take? Oh, Robert Thomas. Do you not pay attention right. at all? No. <laughs> yeah. Zachary Bolduc. Can you let oh. him know what we're doing next, too? <laughs> Zachary Bolduc. Gauntlet is next. So you know. All right. 
Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Jamie. Carrie finally knows what's next. <laughs> yeah. It's 4 o'clock. It's every day. It's, 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 awesome. it's the only time I, I'm not asked what we're doing next. <laughs> That's a good point. All right. Uh, Jamie, yeah. have a good call tonight, man. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate we'll it. We'll see you tomorrow. You got it. We we do have the gauntlet next. Damn, we, we haven't had a returning gauntlet contender oh, in a while. We've ass and taking names. Yeah, we go. have. Yes, we have. All right. Uh, gauntlet next on 101 ESPN. Went out to mow the lawn yesterday. I noticed I had something hanging on the front door there. Went over and uh, it was a it was a, a company offering lawn service, not to not to cut it, but to you know seed and take care of the weeds and things like that. I looked at it, it was like a Xerox copy. I'm like this is your presentation. This is what you're gonna do. You know, Green Envy. Green Envy is fantastic. I just dumped that thing right in the trash can. I don't need any other company to service the lawn because I've got Green Envy. Green Envy, they're the best, man. They, they take care of my lawn for me. I don't have to worry about seeding at the right time or how to take care of weeds that often pop up. And you see it a lot of times in the spring because we get the, the rain and the warm temperature and all of a sudden you got crabgrass and you're dealing with that stuff and you're not seeing that perfect lawn that you that you want. We'll give my friends at Green Envy a call at 636-757-1600. Don't trust anybody else because somebody else might use the national generic stuff that doesn't work on our soil and in in our weather uh, conditions here in Missouri. That's what Green Envy does. They only use products that are formulated right here. I've used Green Envy for well over 10 years now. They're the only company I trust when it comes to servicing the lawn. I love them. You will too. Again, 636-757-1600. Tell them Salter sent you. Four categories, one challenger. Can you master the gauntlet? The gauntlet is powered by Master, your hometown source for business communications for more than 30 years. Visit Mastor.com.
Time for the gauntlet here in the fast lane on 101 ESPN, where it's 402. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler with Kerry Davis and Andrew Marsh. I'm Anthony Salter. We welcome in Nick. What's up, Nick? How's it going, boys? Doing great. Is this your first time in the gauntlet? First time in the gauntlet. All All right. right. Beautiful. Sounds good. Well, congratulations. Thanks for listening. Thanks for playing today. Would you like to take on Andrew Marsh, Kerry Davis, or me in your first time? Don't, I want you. All right, buddy. Yeah. Sounds good. I feel like I've been off for a little while yeah. here, so get shake here. off the rust. All right, Nick, good luck. Thanks, right. buddy. You too. Thank you. All right, Nick, as uh, Anthony heads to the cone of silence, we are getting ready. He's getting out of here. Tell Marshy, is there a topic that you're looking for, a subject, a, a, a specific one that you would prefer? Uh, Probably random. Oh. Definitely not football. Okay. I know – it would take me to the woodshed on that one, so well, baseball. Tell Marshy to spin that wheel. Spin the wheel, Marshy. So you know the point system. If you answer without the options, it's two. If you answer with the options, it's one. And if you get it wrong, it is zero. Hey. Got it. Ooh, Nick. <laughs> you asked for random, and you have been granted random today. Do it. Let's go. All right, as Marshy uh, pulls out the launch codes, we are T minus three seconds. All right, here we go. Nick, you ready? Ready. On Jan- on June 28, 1997, whose ear did Mike Tyson partially bite off at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas? Options. Is it Vitelli Klitschko, Evander Holyfield, or Lennox Lewis? Uh, Holyfield is ringing a bell. Let's do Holyfield final answer. Question number two. According to the American Kennel, Kennel Club, what is a group of pugs called? Man, I just read this. Just kidding. <laughs> oh my, what? You said you wanted the options? Yeah, give me the option. All right. A uh, a troika? Is that what that says, Carrie? I think so. Okay. A bumble and a grumble. So a troika, a bumble, a grumble. Bumble sounds funnier, so let's do bumble. Final answer. All right. Question number two. Question number three. Excuse me. Identify the capital of Italy. Uh, should know this. Capital of Italy. Give me the options. Is it Rome, Florence, or Milan? Go Rome. Final answer. Final question for you, Nick. Waldo's sidekick, also plagued by vision problems, is a dog named what? Easy. These are... <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, let me hear the options. All right, your options are Lucy, Sparky, or Woof. Can you repeat those, Marsh? Yep. Option A, Lucy... Option B, Sparky, or option C, Woof? I've gone with the second option a couple times. Let's go uh, option B, final answer. That would be Sparky. Yeah. All right. Let's get Anthony back in here. How how do you feel? (laughs) Uh, On the words of John Mazalock. Not great. Well, you know, (laughs) you asked for it and you you received Ah. it. So, you know. We'll see how uh, Anthony Stalter does, how he fares. How was the uh, cone of silence, Anthony? Lonely, man. Lonely. Man. Yeah, lonely, silent. That's stuff. Stuff these days. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marsha, you want to tell him? Yeah, pack a lunch. Okay. <laughs> you got random. Hmm. I was going to give you a football question just to throw you off your game, but I'm, I'm going to not do it this time. I appreciate that, Gary. Right. Thank you. Random.
On June 28th, 1997, whose ear did Mike Tyson partially bite off at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas? Evander Holyfield. Final answer. Question number two. According to the American Kennel Club, what is a group of pugs called? Yeah. Um, I like to study stuff like this in my uh, free time, but because I studied it so much and right. I've studied different dog breeds, mm -hmm. I can't remember, but I'm sure the, uh, the options will jog my memory. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Okay, we have option A, a troika. Option B, a bumble. Or option C, a grumble. Mm. Yeah, my research uh, told me it was a bumble. Mm. Final answer. All right. Question number three. Identify the capital of Italy. Well, I cannot be a uh, strong Italian without knowing this, huh? Rome. Final answer. Um, you had me there for a <laughs> second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question number four. Waldo's sidekick, also plagued by vision problems, is a dog named what? Oh, man. What's the dog's name for Waldo, who must also get lost and need to be found? Where is Waldo? <laughs> Where are we? You know what? I don't know. I don't think I know it off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but if the, the options, I, I think I'll know it by the options. Of course. Please. All right. You have Lucy. Yeah. Sparky. Yeah. Or Woof. I think it's Woof. I'll take, I'll take Woof. Final answer, please. All right. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. Let's go to uh, question number two. According to, according to the American Kennel Club, what is a group <laughs> of pugs called? Mm. Anthony, you took the options. You said Bumble. Yeah. Nick, you took the options. You also said Bumble. The correct answer is... Rumbling, bumbling, grumbling. It's a grumble. Oh, yeah. I got it confused, Marsh. My research yeah, was I still mean, right. Uh, it just... Well, Nick no, said actually, he had just it read it. Oh. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, not good. It's, uh, yeah, that's not me. Hmm. All right, let's go to question number one. On June 28th, 1997, whose ear did Mike Tyson partially bite off at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas? Nick, you said Holyfield, Evander Holyfield. Anthony, you also said Evander Holyfield. The correct answer is... It is Evander Holyfield. But Nick needed the options. Ooh. Anthony, you're up two to one. All right. Let's go to question number three. Identify the capital of Italy. Nick, you said Rome. Anthony, you said, I can't call myself Italian and not know the answer to this. And then you stumbled and you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you grumbled. Yeah, you grumbled, grumbled and you bumbled. Yeah. And then you said, I trioked uh, or whatever. Troika. Troika. Yeah. Mm. The correct answer is, it is Rome. But Nick oh. needed the options again. Anthony, Ooh. you are up four <laughs> to two. Final question. Waldo sidekick, also plagued by vision problems, is a dog named what? Nick, you said Sparky. Anthony, you said Woof. Nick. You have chosen poorly. You lose. <laughs> the answer is Woof. Okay, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Nice. Anthony won five to two. Sorry, Nick. Good try, man. Good job, Nick. All good. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Love listening. I oh, appreciate Thank you, Nick. Nick. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks for playing. See you, boys. All right. Take care. All right. Good stuff there. Good job. That wasn't too, that wasn't too <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah. I think if I throw you off with another question, you might be locked into that. But mm -hmm. Like the football thing? <laughs> yeah. You've done that before. I know. Does it bother you? No, because I used to do it to Jamie all the time. So <laughs> he actually started it. Yeah. So <laughs> no, nah. turn about is fair play, fair play there. All right, we're gonna get to our guy BT. Brad Thompson joins us each and every Wednesday now throughout the course of the baseball season. We'll talk to him not only about today's loss, but uh, just kind of reviewing some of the hot topics for the Cardinals with our guy Brad Thompson next on One Hundred and One ESPN.
time for some high heat with BT on 101 ESPN. Inside and high. Powered by Scott Lee Heating Company, your preferred Mitsubishi Electric Elite contractor. Visit scottleeheating.com. There's no excuse for Thompson throwing at the head of light. It's Fast Lane on 101 ESPN with Kerry Davis, I'm Anthony Stalter. Time for a little uh, high heat with our guy Brad Thompson. He joins us each and every week here in the Fast Lane. You see him, of course, alongside Chip Gary on Bally Sports Midwest. The Cardinals fall today 4-3 to three to the Philadelphia Phillies. BT, how are you? I am doing great. We had to use the Ron Darling of me throwing at the uh, head of David Wright. We had to pull that one out. Well, you, you know who who put it together you, you won't need i would assume uh, one mike right there you I, go i was gonna say if i had to be uh, uh, i'll give you I one had to guess yeah i'll give you one guess you nailed it so yeah. oh um, man well great to join you guys regardless and uh look hey i thought i was gonna be joining you guys on way happier terms as i really thought the card was gonna pull out something magical today not so much though no unfortunately not and uh lance lynn I, you know he he battles I, I think overall and i do want to ask you about sonny graham which you saw out of him last night pt but outside of one miles michaelis opening day start against arguably the best team in baseball and one kyle gibson start that got away from him this starting staff and i'm not i'm going to remove zach thompson out because he was filling in for sonny gray this this starting staff has been competitive they've kept you in in most games yeah, and even, honestly, that Kyle Gibson start, to me, might be one of the more impressive ones. To not blow up your bullpen and to give you six innings in one where he gives up six runs, although I'm sure that's not exactly how he planned his home debut. <laughs> I totally agree. Look, this this has worked out, guys, exactly how at least they, they envisioned it, where you, you know you're going to get innings, you know you have guys that are going to give you an opportunity, and that's exactly what this starting staff has done. So uh, the unfortunate part is just early on in the season for the Cardinals, it's been the offense. The offense has not come alive for them yet. But you look at the rotation, look what the bullpen has been able to do. And remember, bullpen is down two pieces. Riley O'Brien, Keenan Middleton uh, are not out there yet. Uh, the, the pitching staff has been really, really solid. BT, we were uh, we were talking about the team obviously doing a great job. Sonny Gray did a great job, but one person that I think has been a surprise is Yvonne Herrera. He got in the game a couple of couple of week, couple of games ago when Contreras went down with the hand injury. Is he going to continue to to push for playing time every single day? And both of those guys are going to be in the lineup. Dude, I think that right now, Kerry, with the way that the offense is struggling, and especially your big boys are are struggling. You've got to figure out ways to get anybody that's swinging the stick in the lineup. So, yeah, I think that you're you're going to see sometimes where a lot like today, and it might flip-flop in Arizona, but you might very well see Herrera, DH, and Contreras behind the plate, or vice versa like we saw today. Contreras batted second. Herrera uh, ended up batting fifth in this ball game. He got himself another home run. Dude, he's swinging with some aggression. Mm -hmm. He's up there trying to do some damage. And he's taken advantage of the opportunity that was given. They knew what they, they, they believed they had in him. Herrera hit at every single level. They made the move uh, to, to make him the guy, right? They, they move on. They, they let him be the backup catcher. I'm not sure they envisioned this as quickly offensively, but they love what they're seeing out of him. And, yeah, I think that you have to figure out ways to get him in the lineup. Brad Thompson joins us right now on the fast lane on 101 ESPN. Uh, BT, speaking of Yvonne Herrera, what what looks different in his approach or his swing? You mentioned him just swinging harder or, or with maybe more aggression, but what were some of the things that he worked on in spring training that are now paying dividends? Well, even further back than spring training, Anthony, he made the adjustment to really open up his his stride. So, like, when he is in his setup, he is very open to the pitcher and then strides closed, and it's just allowing him to see the baseball better. He was getting beat up early, uh, like, inside when he came up in 2022, and he's a young buck. He's a young kid now. Uh, but I think that he realized that he could make some adjustments in his swing to be more free and easy, and we're seeing it. The hands are moving better. Everything looked fluid. Had a great side shot today of his home run swing. Just so balanced and powerful. I think him really opening up that stance helped him a ton. 
Sonny Gray last night, you couldn't have asked for a better start given that he was on a pitch count. It's going to be 65. So, you know, he pitches five scoreless innings, picks up the win in his debut. He was as advertised, but from a former pitching pitcher standpoint, what what stood out to you about Sonny Gray's performance last night, PT? He, he didn't miss, Anthony. Like, that's what stood out, <laughs> and especially for a guy that was making his, his first outing of the season. There was, there was like one pitch that I can remember, and it was in his fifth inning where he missed arm side with a fastball and then came right back to it. But you watch where Herrera was set up behind the plate, and that's where the ball was going. Like, if he wants a slider down and in to a lefty, I thought he did a, a masterful job against Bryce Harper of really tying him up with the harder cutter and then the slider. Well, you know with Bryce Harper, if you make a mistake, if that thing leaks over the plate, if it backs up on you, you're going to get a new baseball from the umpire because he is going to punish that thing, and he didn't do it. He did that to Schwarber as well. He mixed everything up well. So, to me, the fact that he was so dialed in with his stuff and put it where he wanted to, that's what aces do. Like, they just don't make those mistakes. So, to, to do what he did, to get in 64 pitches, to get five scoreless in and strike out five, it's remarkable. I cannot wait until he actually has no limitations on him and see exactly what that looks like in a Cardinal uniform. BT, another player that really had a great night last night was JoJo Romero, went an inning and two-thirds, four strikeouts. He has seemed to just continue to gain confidence outing after outing. Last year got his, I think, his first real opportunity to be in the big leagues and have, you know, show what he's capable of. What have you seen from him so far? Dude, the, the, well, the confidence, you mentioned it, right? Like, that is a big thing. And that confidence grew for him last year when he was given looks late in games. He was given looks closing out games. And he knows that the staff believes in him. He believes in himself, and he's got the stuff. I saw JoJo today riding uh, – riding into the ballpark. He rides a scooter, lives downtown, <laughs> riding in on the scooter. I was looking uh, to see if he had a sidecar for, uh, let's just say, his confidence because he was uh, like, he is, he's ready to rock out there uh, when, when he's pitching. Yeah, he just, he's blowing the, you know, mid to upper 90s fastball. He's got the good sweeping slider that he could throw off of that, and, and that really keeps the lefties off balance, and he's got a good changeup that he throws to both left and right. I mean, you look at that that outing. He goes an inning at 230, punches out four, and there were still more left in the tank. Like, uh, Ollie was going to have to extend somebody in that pen. Somebody was going to have to get some uncomfortable outs, and he really trusted JoJo to do that, and he did the job. Speaking of confidence, one person that may be struggling with their confidence is Victor Scott II. Uh, got a hit today, but made a left turn into field and was tagged out uh, what have you seen oh. from him yeah that was that was a frustrating one uh, what have you seen from him and and do you think that at some point he's going to be have need to be sent down to just kind of reset himself and gain that confidence again Nah, you know what Here, here's the thing and, and who knows he might end up getting sent down at some point we know that newt is coming back they're gonna have to make a big decision there tommy edmund will be back at some point but you know what i hope for for today and i know it will be because I, I know the conversations that they've had with victor scott leading into this one it is a learning day all around mm -hmm. right so victor he, he made an error on the ball in the first inning two unearned runs for lance lynn he made that base running gap. I think that there were at least two other plays in center field that uh, on a normal day, I think he comes up with. He had one that he took a minute to read and then ended up diving for a sinking liner for Real Muto. It's in and out of his glove. I think that he can catch that thing standing up. And another one that dumped in front of him that I truly believe that he, he can have on a normal day. I just think that things maybe sped up on him a little bit today, but it's a learning thing, man. He's so young. This is his first time in the big league and he's got a skill set that others don't have. He's the fastest player in the big leagues. We had the graphic on the broadcast two nights ago. His sprint speed is faster than pick your favorite player, whether it be Bobby Witt Jr. Or Ellie De La Cruz. Victor Scott the second is faster. That's closing speed in the outfield. That's stolen bases. That's first to third. That's scoring from first on a double in the gap. It's just a stuff that you, you don't have a lot of and you need more of in the game is that kind of speed so yeah it's it, it sucks when you have a moment like that and today was one of those games and obviously victor scott a large part of it was it, it's one of the first games this year that i think the cardinals actually beat themselves like they they, they it, you know vic had the the error he had the base running gaff we all know what happened in that inning. they scored one run there in the eighth could have been multiple runs. It stinks, but you know what? It happens through the course of 162. And if you can learn your lesson early on as a young player and have the conversations with your coaching staff and with your teammates, and I, I watched and we had during the commercial break, we had the camera follow Vic after the first inning. 
and follow him down the stairs and in the dugout. We're just going to watch him to see what kind of conversations people were having with him. And it was nothing but propping him up. And it was nothing but building up a young player. So that's what it's all about, man. So he is, uh, he's going to take his lumps just like everybody else. Today, not a great game for Victor Scott II, but I believe he's going to learn from it. BT, we, we were getting some questions on the text line about that final inning and whether or not Mason Wynn should have bunted over uh, Siani. And we saw Mason Wynn the other night come up with a, a huge hit. What, what do you think is going through the mind of Ali Marmol in that moment, whether or not to move the runner over or to let Mason Wynn, who's been hot at the plate, let him hit away? Yeah, I think that he's just really comfortable with the way that he swings the bat. But certainly you can, you can second guess it, right? You can have him put it down. Then all of a sudden, a, a single ends up winning. I think they also trust the speed, or tying it. I'm sorry. I think they trust the speed of Stiani over at first base. That that he'll end up getting a good jump. He could score from second base uh, on a single. So look, it's. Uh, I, I think you can second guess it if you want to, but they are trusting in Mason Wynn to swing the bat. So uh, at the end of the day, didn't end up getting it done there. You'd love to see Jordan Walker not on the ground again to end the game. You'd love to have a chance, even though he struggled mightily uh, so far early this season, to get it to Goldie in a pinch hit opportunity because he was looming right there on deck. But I didn't have a problem with him letting him swing the bat, although the results you know, tell you that maybe, maybe you try something different. BT, we know uh, you got to head out, right? You're going to Arizona? We are actually leaving tomorrow. So oh, I pulled off nice. to talk to you gentlemen. I was in traffic and I know my crowd. Um, do you guys do you guys happen to get angry in traffic? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know yourself, BT. I'm proud of you. Guys, I almost <laughs> I almost wrecked my car just to stop somebody else. Like there was there was somebody <laughs> driving, they put the fake hazards on and started flying on the shoulder while everybody else uh, when it was uh, stopped, and uh, like I, my truck was way bigger than this little car, and it would have, it would have been. I mean, I'd have won, this thing, <laughs> but I would have lost in the long run. I would have been stuck in traffic for a lot longer. But I realized I am not built for driving in traffic or drive time. I got too many problems. <laughs> Well, BT, the first step is recognizing that, uh, you know, there's some work to be done internally. So nice job. You show, you show, you're showing maturity for yeah. sure. Bro, I appreciate that. And I was listening to you guys. You entertained me the entire time. Well, good. Well, thank, thank you. you. We know you're listening to podcasts, though. We're probably talking to your parents. You're, you're such a good kid in that regard. You, you always call your folks. I, I, anytime well, you say, you know, I call my parents every day, I'm like, you know, darn it, I'd never call my parents. <laughs> so, well, here's what I do also on, on team flights. I, I bring a uh, Bluetooth. I bring, like, the wireless speaker. And in the back of the plane, we just jam a, whether the show is live or we yes. do the podcast. I mean, that's what everybody likes to hear. I love that. I, I'm appreciative of that, so, actually. Uh, that so you are, remember you, you that, guys and you're listen. in the beginning of the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, they, you know, hey, they lost, but uh, great effort all around. Good job. We're going to yeah, focus. They tried hard, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. <laughs> they certainly did. All right, BT, great stuff, man. Have a good trip. We'll talk to you again next week. Sounds good, fellas. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you next week. All right, buddy. Right. See you. That's Brad Thompson, our good buddy, as he heads out of town uh, tomorrow. As the Cardinals open up a new series against the Arizona Diamondbacks, who are tied 3-3 with the Rockies right now. Diamondbacks off to a 5-7 start, uh, this result pending today. Cardinals lose 4-3. We will get into more Cardinals action a little bit later on in the show. we got our NFL four downs next on 101 ESPN. Hey, it's Gary, and I need to tell you about my good friends over at Scrap Mart Metals. If you're a contractor or you own a business that needs recycling, well, then you need to talk to Scrap Mart Metals. They are tailor-made for your business, 
to meet your schedule and your budget. You'd be amazed how scrap metals, metals add up and can help your business's cash flow. If you're a plumber, heating and cooling, an excavator, or any type of contractor, Scrap Mart Metals recycling can make your job easier. If you own that heavy equipment, it's frustrating. It breaks down often, and soon or sooner or later, you're going to have to get rid of it. When that time comes, Scrap Mart Metal will come and get it out of your way. They'll haul it to one of their locations and get you a check the same day. Yes, the same day. Or if you want to haul it yourself, they have three convenient locations, Valley Park, Peebley, Jonesburg. If it's metal, they will buy it. It is recycling made easy. They offer convenient drive-on scale, and they have the highest payout. You will always get top dollar for your scrap metals. Just visit them at scrapmartmetals.com. My guy Lucas can talk to you about setting up a business account. Again, that's scrapmartmetals.com, and tell them Carrie sent you. ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Cardinals fall to the Phillies today, four to three. They'll have tomorrow off and then they'll head to Arizona. We just got done talking with Brad Thompson. If you missed that interview, make sure you go to 101ESPN.com or check out the free 101 mobile app. Just head to the podcast page. You'll find all of our interviews and full shows there. And it's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. The Blues will take on the 
Chicago Blackhawks tonight. Pre-game starts at 6. Puck drop is at 7. Stay tuned. In the 5 o'clock hour, we will talk with Blues Insider from The Athletic, Jeremy Rutherford. But coming up next, we have our NFL Four Downs. I'm Andrew Marsh, and this Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Finding roads in Shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Here in the fast lane on 101 ESPN. Marsh, go ahead. First down. All righty, gentlemen. Let's talk some football. Even if no one wants to hear it. All right. First oh, down. Hey, hey, come on. Hey, what? Hey, yeah, what they do. What the heck? It's football season. Absolutely. Every season is football season. You're come not wrong. wrong. Got draft coming up. Come on now. What are you talking about? Huh? What the hell? <laughs> Guy signing $150 million contracts? What's going <laughs> on? What? <laughs> All right, guys. After trading Stephon Diggs to the Texans, are the Bills Super Bowl is the Bills Super Bowl window closed? Yes. Question two, please. Oh, this is not that. No, yeah. I, I think I said it the other day. You don't get better trading away one of your best players, especially uh, a, a position like wide receiver when you have a quarterback that is dependent on that re, on that position. And so, you know, I think we've seen their window closing. You know. Little by little, the last couple of years, you felt like the best opportunity that they had was maybe two years ago when Cincinnati came in and beat them at their in their home in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Maybe the best opportunity was even before that when they, they went back and forth with Kansas City in Kansas City. That may have been their best team, best opportunity, but I think the window has, has just slowly, slowly closed year after year, and you don't have a real running game. Josh Allen has been your running game. James White did a pretty good job in the playoffs. You don't have both of your, your top receivers from last year. Last couple of years are gone in Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. You got two really good tight ends. But offensively, what are you? who, who the hell are you throwing the ball to? That is going to – I know Shakir did a, did, a, did a really good job, but who's going to threaten your defense, the opposing team's defense, and, and really give Josh Allen a, a, a viable target, you know, down after down that he knows can go catch the ball and make a play. I think their window was closed, and I, th and I think they realized it. I think they realized that from a roster construction standpoint, they, they weren't going to win anything of significance. So why hang on to a wide receiver that w wasn't going to – you weren't, you weren't winning a, a Super Bowl with him. It's a deep draft when it comes to receivers. They can they can rebuild that spot pretty quickly. What they can't do is win with a defense that, yeah, they lost a bunch of guys last year, okay? So that that has to be factored in. It, no team's going to be able to overcome losing their top three defenders like the Bills did a year mm -hmm. ago. But I, I think give them a little credit for saying, okay, we know where we're at right now. We know we're not good enough. And hanging on to, to Stefan Diggs and paying him what we, what, you know, over the next couple of years, what, what we have to pay him, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us. So let's get a draft pick. Are they worse today? Yeah, but maybe they'll be better tomorrow. Not literally tomorrow, but you know what I mean. And they could be. Yeah, they never know. Maybe. They never know. They see what they do. Maybe Who they knows? Get, maybe they get hey, T, yeah. T. Higgins. I don't know. Hey. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Second down. All right. Well, you said T. Higgins. Speaking of the AFC North. Do you think Aaron Rodgers can get the Jets over the hump and win the division? I don't think he's in the AFC. <laughs> no, AFC East, yeah. He's in the AFC East. Um, yep. Speaking of the AFC East. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what version of Aaron Rodgers you're going to get. I think everyone was so excited to see him play and only got to see him play for four snaps last season mm -hmm. before he went down with an injury. We, Jamie and I have talked about this time and time again. You don't normally get better the older you get especially coming off of a leg injury, the, the, your base, your legs are the most important thing in sports. You, you can have a strong arm, but it all starts from the ground up. And him returning from, a, from an Achilles injury, I don't know what version of him you're going to get. And so I know they're trying to get better. They, they made some additions this offseason to be a better team. I, I just can't say yay or nay. Now, the, the division, it seems as though, the, yeah, because who the hell is trying in that division? We just talked about the Bills. Nah. 
Yep. The uh, Miami Dolphins, uh, okay, but they can't win the big one. Yeah. And then I don't know New England is. Patriots are rebuilding. They're, they are just there. Mm-hmm. And so you have a chance because Miami, they're going to play really well for probably 10 to 12 weeks. And then as it gets closer to the to playoff time, you start to see the real version of, of who they are. But I, I don't trust – I still don't trust the Jets just because I don't know what I'm going to get from, from Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I don't think they – I don't think they get over the hump. I, I, I'll, I'll take Miami. I know what Miami is. I don't know what the Jets are. I know yeah. they're trying. Like, like you said, Kerry, they're bringing in guys and they brought in Mike Williams and Mike Williams is going to be good for about nine games yeah, and unfortunately yeah. he's going to get hurt. If, could, be Tyrant, Tyrant that, uh, could be six. Have you seen that? Could be six. field that they play on? Yeah, yeah. could be six. I know they have, they have talent up and down the roster, but will it all come together? If Aaron, we haven't seen Aaron Rodgers play in two years now. Correct. What is he going to be? Or over a year, I should say. I so, I'll take I'll take my chances with Miami. So I'll say no. By the way, you guys uh, mentioned the Patriots. Do we think the Patriots are going to be are going to go back to being just completely mediocre and non-existent in the NFL? Yes. Is uh, Tom Brady playing for them? No, no. Then yes. Okay. Yeah, I feel so like uh, you know, people my age don't really recognize that the Patriots were actually terrible for quite some for time. Now, I, I know they did make the Super Bowl yeah, with Drew Bledsoe and with those terrible jerseys. Uh, yeah. uh, and they played the Bears in the 85 yeah. Super Bowl. Yep. Yep. But Other in between that, there, yeah, they were it was bad. <laughs> yeah, and I think the only reason they really, I mean, Bledsoe, yeah, Bledsoe got him there, but Parcells was their head coach. so And that was a whole he, debacle, which you will find out. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Anthony's been watching, watching Dynasty. Yeah. Keep watching. Is that when he hops the plane? Keep watching. Yeah, he's like, I'm not going back with you guys. <laughs> I'm going to the Jets. <laughs> I remember the story, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I, saw the, I watched the first episode last night of Dynasty uh, with, with my wife, Kristen. She enjoyed it, too, first episode. So looking forward it, it to it. It better. It was pretty good day last night. Yep. Third down. Well, speaking of the AFC North. <laughs> there we go. If the Bengals trade T. Higgins, which team would make the most sense for the former second rounder? Just do a one for one, man. Justin, Jeff- Justin Jefferson is, uh, he wants to play with his guys. Just do a one for one. Or maybe the Vikings need a little bit more. A little bit more. I think so, yeah. yeah T. Higgins look. is a good receiver. He's not Justin Jefferson. Maybe a Justin Jefferson and uh, T. Higgins in a second-round draft pick from the uh, the old Cincinnati Bengals. Mm. Wait, you're saying trade T. Higgins to the Vikings? Yeah. That's what or Justin saying. Jefferson. Or Justin Jefferson? Yeah. <laughs> Justin wants to get out of there. He wants to play with no, his guys. he doesn't. Yeah, he does. No, no, he you guys does. Heard he left him. Stop it. Kirk, he left him. Go to Atlanta. Play with, play with nah, Kirk down there. Down. Nah. Now you're getting way too ahead of yourself. <laughs> come on. I don't now. know where T. Higgins ends up. I think he um, he obviously wants, I mean, everybody, you play this game for, you don't know how many snaps you have. You don't know how many games you have. You don't know when that last opportunity is going to be. You want to get paid. He's on the franchise tag but wants to have, you know, some 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 years on that contract and make sure that he, he has his future set for him. So, yeah. Uh, being traded is probably in his future if they can find the right trade partner. Yeah, I think that, I mean, just the teams that could could use wide receivers, talking about the Cardinals, the Panthers. Oh, I wouldn't want Those teams go. stink, uh, though. The Patriots, the Commanders. I mean, those are the teams that need wide here's receivers. A team, here's a team that could use the Pittsburgh a Steelers. No. Um, a bo- well, they could. You just traded one. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah. Jacksonville. Ah. Jacksonville needs a legit wide receiver. Yeah, because they got Kirk coming off injury. Yeah, Kirk is Kirk, a uh, Ridley left. Kirk is a, a Kirk. When Christian Kirk went down, that that team suffered. Like he's he's not a number one wide. He's receiver, not a number though. one wide receiver, but they he got Gabe he was, Davis. Uh, Oh, stop So it. they could use a, okay. a bona fide number one. They got yeah. Zay Jones. Zay Jones play, had a really I good I mean, Buffalo, relation. Buffalo makes sense. We just got done talking, to, talking yeah. about ah, Buffalo. Yeah. There I think go. the Bills are just going to sit and pick. This is the deepest draft for wide receivers that we've seen in a while. Mm-hmm. Everybody's talking about the top three or four, but you're going to get somebody in the second round that could wind up being a number one pick. Six, three, six. Number, I'm sorry, number one receiver. 636 six says the uh, Chargers need a wide receiver. Yes, they, they do. Of both of theirs. Yep. Right? Yes, they do. That, that's, uh, that's a good call. They could use him. Fourth down. All right, gentlemen, Tua is in, his, uh, is in the fifth and final year of his rookie contract. How would you handle this situation if you were the Dolphins? Would you sign him to a long-term deal? You got to. 
I mean, what else are you going to do? Uh, you're going to watch this thing play out. And then what? Potentially have to franchise him in the offseason? Yeah. For, what, 35? Yeah. What is it? What is the franchise for? one for year. For quarterbacks. It's 30 a lot, million, 30, 40 I'd, million? I'd rather go year to year with Tua than really? sign him to a long time. Yeah. He stayed healthy last he year. He had a great year last year. Yes, he did. He it's an offense. In, it's an offense. It's well, he's playing. Is the catch. offense changing? Nope. No. Did gonna you, be there for a while. Did you guys watch the in-season hard knocks with the Dolphins? Mm-hmm. I can't watch that. So, well, yeah, you, you, yeah, I, I totally get that. In-season, I probably could. I can't watch the training mm-hmm. camp. It's oh, like yeah. PTSD for me. Sorry, buddy. It's stressful. But, like, to, uh, at Driving least. Driving home 14 hours from Tampa mm-hmm. and running into a police officer. You know? Yeah, that, uh, you told us that story. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was tough. That was a tough <laughs> listen to you on that story. I, I, I watched the show and I just like Tua comes off as like a gosh darn it my bad guys <laughs> like that's the quarterback he is and I don't like, like a nicer yeah more like, aware like version gets, of gets Russell Wilson blown up and he's like well what a great hit like <laughs> I, he just to me he's not I don't want that his spleen is hanging outside that was good hit. golly gee that was a good hit yeah like yeah. nice dude completely nice guy mm-hmm. like you know obviously on the field and very much so off the field too but like I want a little bit of you know, angry. Like I just want my quarterback to be angry. You know, sure. little Tom Brady little throwing Tom his Tom Brady his uh, Nintendo controller up against a wall, yeah. following an attack mobile loss. <laughs> Which, by the way, now that we're we're in it now, uh-huh. you're in it. Yeah, I don't. I, that's interesting to me. It, I mean, would you consider that cheating? Yes. Was that to stomp on the ground and let it reset? Oh yeah, the Nintendo. Oh, yeah, no that's question. cheating. Oh yeah, oh 100 percent. We all have so a we, buddy. Yeah, yeah. my cousin. I had a yeah. cousin that 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 would lean over and like Anytime. hit the reset oh, button. My bad. No, no, no. Like, that's funny, right, guys. Off. My bad. Yeah. Get out of here. So he deflated those footballs. Probably. No question. <laughs> yeah, no question. <laughs> all right. Uh, there's our four downs here. After four series, is this where we expected the Cardinals to be? We're going to talk about that next on 101 ESPN. Well, as you know, it's been raining a lot in St. Louis. Check out your roof. Is it leaking? You got an old roof, a damaged roof, ugly roof. You know that you just want to replace it at some point. Call my friends at Happy Roof Company. They're fantastic, especially if you have a leaky roof. You don't want a situation where you got a bad damaged roof that's causing damage now in your house. If you call Happy Roof Company today because you got a problem, they're going to have someone to, to look at your issue within 24 hours. They're fantastic. They do residential and commercial roofing. They have superior high-end products that they use. They've got cost-effective solutions on Flat roofing and metal roofs, free estimates with competitive pricing, but you got to pick up the phone and call them at 314-665-3001. You can also visit the happyroof.com if you want to check out their website. Everything is done right here in St. Louis, though. They don't chase storms. They're not this, the, the, one of these companies that come in and out with the storm, and next thing you know, you, you, don't, you don't know if the, the warranty is good. Or you don't know if the company is going to be around in a couple of weeks to, if, there's an, if there's another issue. Not with the Happy Roof Company. 100% of the market is in St. Louis and the surrounding areas. Their headquarters are out in Sunset Hills. Again, give them a call. If you got a problem, they'll have someone out to look at your issue within 24 hours. 314-665-3001. It's the Happy Roof Company.
lose today, four to three to the Philadelphia Phillies. They dropped the series. If you if you kind of take stock, gentlemen, of where they are right now after four series, is this kind of what, what you expected? Lose against the Dodgers. You actually won against the Padres and the Marlins. You kind of figured you, well, I don't know. Marlins were a playoff team last year. So mm-hmm. Marlins. you, you dropped two series. Issue. They have. You dropped two series. You won two series. But what do you expect? I think so. I yeah. mean, I think it kind of gives you the, the, the understanding of where they are in terms of the playing field. The Dodgers feel like they are an exceptional team. The Philadelphia Phillies have been pretty good for the last few years. Um, and we think that the, the, the Atlanta Braves are going to be that exceptional team as well. I don't know if you are kind of like the second tier, which doesn't – it's not bad. You still have an opportunity. We, you got to get your guys – BT talked about – we had Brad Thompson on earlier. Mm-hmm. He talked about your guys being – they have to hit. And so right now guys aren't hitting ha- – having those timely hits. You're not hitting with runners in scoring position. Pitching has been solid, you know, bullpen, starting pitching, I think, has been solid overall. But just the opportunities to to score runs have uh, not come in, in, at the opportune times, in my no. opinion. I think they've been better than what I expected at the beginning of the season. Yeah. I thought they were maybe going to win, like, one, two games in that first two series. You watch your mouth. I'm being honest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's probably good. I didn't think that they would be – a, like right around 500 around this point in time. So mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, there's some games out there that they kind of threw away that they could have a better record right now. And, you know, just whether it was um, bad base running or, you know, misplays in the field or, you know, giving up, you know, six runs in the first inning, uh, yeah. you know, happens. It happens, right? But like, or or like the Dodgers game, right on Sunday Night Baseball, where you could have split the series. Like, I thought that was a winnable game. And mm-hmm. the the one thing that I am encouraged by, I know this sounds weird, but like the the games that some of the games that they're losing, they're only losing by one run, two yep. runs. They're very close games. So I think that's encouraging to see compared to what we saw last season. But I still think that there's more to give out of this baseball team. Lisa text in last place. Hmm. When did that become okay? Never. Yeah, I agree. I, and I, not uh, here. Not here. That's because the central's better than uh, what we expected, uh, gentlemen. Better than what Anthony Stalter told us. Told us they were going to stink. Okay. And he was wrong. So they're really good. I love. I love how we're just cherry picking everything <laughs> here. It's like full panic. Cardinals will be in th- in last place forever. Because the Central uh, is great now. Like, come on. I mean, the Pittsburgh Pirates are nine and three. I think they are stellar. We. All and jo- the Cubs beat the the Dodgers twice, two out of three. All jokes aside, I don't know, they, you're not joking there. They actually did. They did. <laughs> All jokes aside, we have no idea what the hell the middle of the league is going to look like. We know for certain, for certainty, with certainty, that the Dodgers, the Braves, they're gonna be they're gonna be great all year. We know that the New York Yankees at 10 and 2 now have started off great and they're probably going to overcome the the loss of Garrett Cole. Are they a World Series contender? I don't know. Other than that, what do we actually know? Do you guys think that the for example the Philadelphia Phillies who we just saw are a 500 club? Probably not. They're 6 and 6 right yep. now. Do you guys think that the Baltimore Orioles, with all their young talent, are going to play, you know, 600 baseball throughout the course of the year? They're, they're going to be you know, yeah. only a couple of games above 500. Probably they're, not. They're 6-4 six right now. The Rays are 6-6. Six and six. They're always competitive. The Boston Red Sox are 7-4. and four. Nobody, nobody had them being a contender. In the, we don't know what we're looking at right now so do in you Major need- League Baseball. But what, what, Freaking what, Astros are in last place. So you need about 40 games, 50 games for you to kind of have a, a clearer picture. 40, 50 games would put us where? June? Probably around Flag Day. About Flag, is day? flag day? Yeah. Is about Flag the, Day is, is fine. Is day? <laughs> sure. I, I don't know what the number is. I just know it's not Let's see. 10 games. Well, it's definitely or 12 games. games. No, it's more games than that. It's more, you got to have more of a, a sample size, as they as they like to say. But you know, I, Sorry, I do think just what you've seen is is 
other than other than the hitting, which I think will get better, I don't think Jordan Walker is going to bat, what is he, 180, 190 right now. I don't think he's going to bat that for the entire season. I don't think Nolan, Nolan Arenado is going to struggle. I don't think Nolan Gorman is going to struggle. His average probably won't get extremely high, but he's going to hit the ball harder and hit more home runs. Mm-hmm. And Paul Goldschmidt will as well. He'll, he'll hit the ball harder and hit more home runs. So I think that component will get better. Now the question is, will the pitching stay the same? Will it get better or will it get worse? Because right now it's 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 pretty good. What you say? It's it, fine. It, fast line fine. Yeah. Okay. That's we're not, dealing with the, we're uh, unfortunately for us <laughs> we're dealing with a muddled middle team, and the muddled middle is going to ride the roller coaster all year. It's not just going to be the Cardinals guys. There is a large group in the middle of the league that will look like this. More times than not. All right, we're up again, so we're going to get into our sports six packs. So if you've got a mm. question for us, 314 399 9646, the Air Comfort Service text line. Text in. We'll do our sports six pack next. It's time for the fast lane to answer your sports questions. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Asking me all these weird questions. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer me. The sports six pack is now. Five hundred two. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. We're going to talk to Jeremy Rutherford, our Blues insider with the Athletic, coming up in about fifteen minutes or so. But we got plenty of time for our sports six pack. Often turned into our sports two pack. Hmm. Marsh, go. Question number one. All right, from the three one four. If the Battle Hawks are in the UFL Championship game, will the Battle Dome be a complete sellout of sixty five thousand? 
Oh, yeah. I, I don't they, see why not. If they open, they, They've got it all opened up now, right? There's not certain sections that are blocked off. Marsh, you were there. Well, there are certain sections up top that nobody's sitting in, so... I bet you'd be So, packed. yeah, it'd be blocked. It's blocked off. Yeah. Well, that's because they're not in the championship game yet. But when they are. When they are. It'll be open. Yep. It'll be well, rocking. You might not be able to find a seat, but we will. Oh. We're going to be right there on the sidelines. There we are. And you're going to call the play. I'm going to uh, probably yeah, call, the, maybe, probably maybe call the first play. Okay. You taking a shot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You gotta, you gotta leave it in the back, the back yeah. of the minds there. Yeah, this is, uh, they could do this at any at point. At any time. Yeah. yeah. By, by the way, the the seats that I was sitting in on Saturday, we were right behind the uh, the field goal post, and I had two buddies with me that that played football, and it was so funny listening to them break down coverages, mm-hmm. like while it was happening. It, it was pretty cool. I th- I think you would really enjoy that. You know, not being on the yeah. sideline, but being in the stands. I used to love sitting next to Kara. I've mentioned this before. What'd you say? <laughs> you son of a... <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Me on the sidelines? It sounded like it. I was on the field. No, I was fumbling, no, but I was the, on the field. you in the stands. Come on, man. It's better to... It's a good It's a good, uh, good visual. What the hell? It's a breakdown plays. I thought you were being serious. I am being serious. No, you can you're not. see better... You can, from behind the goalpost, you can really than you can from, from being from on the, the sideline. If you're up top, if you're all the way up top, I mean, that's it's the very way you top, see it. Where you can almost touch no, but you're seen from a broadcast view, correct? If you're sitting uh, on the on like the fifty, give or take, and you're yeah, on the sides, right, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, saying you're yeah. right. You're, you you got that good angle. You got that Madden view. You okay. Know? Yeah. Eh. What they would call the coach's view. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You. I mean, I think you need both. Honestly. I mean, we we watch film from. Sideline and end zone copy, so yeah. it does help. You put it together, you can you can see everything. Hey, Carrie, you you study film. I, I actually, f- from a defensive standpoint, I'd rather have the sideline view. From an offensive standpoint, I'd rather have. Yeah. Well, I want both for offense. But well, offense, like we, it really helps. The end zone view helps with actually the line. interior. Yeah, yeah, like O line being able to see the box. When you go to the sideline view, you get to see everything, and you can see. You know, coverages, you can see route combinations, you can see what type of uh, protection they're doing. Well, actually, you see the better, you see the protection better from the end zone, though. Mm-hmm. You can see who blitzed and where. It just, you need both sides, both angles, though, mm-hmm. to be successful. There you go. Question number two. Interesting one here from the 913. Would you rather get paper cuts between all your fingers and toes Ooh. or one razor blade cut to your gums in your mouth? Oh, man. Are it you also says me? Uh, keep in mind that a cut in your mouth would take forever mm. to heal. What the? Who is a jigsaw? Is terrible. Jigsaw texting in today? I, I think there's the, a new Saw movie coming out. Is, soon. I think I saw that. Mm-hmm. I, Good God. I may man. just do the one. Just one. Nah, just give me the paper cuts. And every finger and oh, every toe. Razor blade to my mouth. Uh, hey. Just in a heel. After a so while, I figured I'd just go, you know, like, ah. One and done. Yeah, it's paper cuts. I mean, they're, they suck, but. They do suck. And it's, I mean, you, you're going to be spreading your finger. It's going to keep happening. You ever see those people that put their hand on the table and then do the people knife, do the knives? knives? Yeah. Those people are psychopaths. Yeah, they are. I think the person that just texted in is a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for, for listening. I love it. I mean, we 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 call our listeners psychopaths because uh, that's what we are. So, mm-hmm. yeah. much love to you. Want to play a game? <laughs> Question number three. From the 573, the Blues will probably get above 90 points this season. Do we consider this a good, okay, or a misleading season due to the holes within the team? I don't think it's a misleading season. I think it would be an okay season. But I, I, it, I can't I can't say good. Well, I, I think it depends on if you make the playoffs. Are you are you in the playoffs? No. Okay, well then no, it's a bad season. <laughs> the hell are we talk about? <laughs> All right, there you go. That's fair. <laughs> what difference does it make? You got ninety points. Yeah. yeah but it. you're at home watching. Right. Good for you. Good pal. call. Yeah. The you're hell? on the you're on the dance. No. Don't have an opportunity. Buddy, cares if you, how many points you got. Are you in or are you out? Bad season. <laughs> Carrie's right. Well said, man. Question number four. We head to the snake pit for this question from Tanisha. Are you guys going to be watching UFC 300 this weekend? 
I've given UFC an op- a chance, and I just I can't get into it. Mm. Um, I, I can I, I certainly see the appeal, but uh, no. I haven't gotten into UFC either. I've watched a few um, fights. I, I'm more of a boxing fan. Mm-hmm. Like me too. I keep your feet on the ground. Don't kick me. Yeah. You kick me in my Kicking face. Shins and stuff. We're gonna have it's gonna be problematic. Yeah. Throw your hands. Mm-hmm. Don't kick. So that's just mm-hmm. me. I like boxing though. Yeah. I'm, I'm haven't haven't been able to really get into the UFC. Yeah, I, I've watched a few, but I probably won't watch it this weekend. I'll but tell the you, I'll WWE, be wa- I'll tell you, I'll be watching huh? Friday Night SmackDown though tomorrow yeah. after the Cardinals beat up uh, on the Diamondbacks. Yeah. Am I right, Kerry? And the Blues beat up on the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah. Am I yeah. right, Anthony? Absolutely, Marsh. You're I'll talking see about L.A. Fort- Knight do his thing. L.A. Knight. Yeah. yeah. I knew what you meant. I did. <laughs> hey, Marsh, I knew what you meant. I just want to make sure tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow is Thursday. We got a couple yeah. more days left. Yeah, I know. I'm just getting excited for oh, okay. Friday. All right, because yeah, right. you said tomorrow, and I well, didn't want you to you know, be like, maybe hey, I'll watch boys, some reruns to get me uh, caught up. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a, that makes a lot know. of sense. Marsh so. and Carrie have been talking about WWE I, I am, for I am a week in. now. I'm back in. You yeah. look it. I, I, You're fired up. Oh man, I was excited about that WrestleMania, <laughs> man. Hey, they guys coming out of there. They look Roman Reigns, the bloodline. Mm. <sighs> there you go. I was telling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> you know, like all the whatever they're called. I, I was telling my uh, my girlfriend last night that. I feel like I'm seven years old again because <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to watch Survivor again. Uh-huh. I, uh, sur- Survivor, my goodness, it was my favorite show growing up. Sure. And, of course, I liked wrestling. And now here we are, 28, 20 years later. You know, Marsh, did I, did I tell you about the one time that I decided to relive my childhood and I stumbled upon a Netflix documentary? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the American, American Gladiators. Gladiators. Yeah. And, um... It's mind blowing. That, we don't have to rehash this. We don't have to revisit it. Gary, I know you watched it too. That was tough. That was probably one of the like. I love documentaries. I love seeing, especially. I was. I probably have never been so excited to watch a documentary yeah. as I was about the. I remember the American these guys. Life. Oh man, I watch these guys all the time. And then you hear the hardships. You're like, what the hell were they doing to these good folks? Ah, these were ice. good people. And laser, laser, and blazer, nitro, and nitro, saber. It's a great guys, great ah. gals. What are they doing? <laughs> Barely paying them. They paying them peanuts. Running them through the just the they gauntlet. Got action figures and toys and lunch boxes in the stores. Yeah, nothing in terms of revenue. <laughs> See a penny nothing of in it. terms of profits. Oh my god. Mm. Yeah, people are smashing into them. They usually record like four shows in a day. Broken noses and they don't even fix that. Get back out there. Then they tried to. You know, take some supplements, and then they ban those supplements. (laughs) Man. What do you want these guys to do? Huh? They don't get off days. No. No. No off days. No off days. Felt terrible by myself and Mm. what happened to Nitro. Oh, man. Question number five. All right. uh, From the 636, speaking of Survivor, out of the three of you, who would last longer on Survivor? Who would outwit, outplay, and outlast? I think Marsh. It would be Marsh. Marsh, can you fish? Uh, I I can fish. I don't know if I can spear fish the way that those uh, people do. I'd figure it out, though. Well, they give you some if you win oh, okay. uh, one of the reward challenges. For I'm sure. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to. This is going to be very simple. I'm going to tell you why Marsh would win and why you and I would get bounced. And there's, <laughs> there's specific reasons for each. <laughs> Marsh would win because he's likable. <laughs> that actually makes me a massive threat. No, no, no. You you would do it in a way where you're like ah, you know, he's likable and. You you would be just you you would be just threatening enough, but not mm-hmm. threatening. Yeah. Like Carrie would be very threatening. <laughs> like Probably. former former <laughs> pro athlete, you know. Like he'd be in great shape. That way he'd be he'd be you know he's in good shape as it is now. But he'd be training for it. He'd be one of the first dudes. I'd be like, nope, out. Yeah, shoot him out of there. So me. I would be playing the revenge game constantly. Mm-hmm. People wouldn't be trusting me. I'd be out. He'd be gone. Episode one, no. I'd be episode two. <laughs> no, well, that that tribe would be would be decimated because you need you you know you need some 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 strong players early on in the game. Mm-hmm. And then then they once turn you hit the you. merge, that's when you. you start getting. Well, that's true. Yeah. So, All right. So maybe not episode one and two. Yeah. 
Gary and I ain't lasting long, though. I don't know. I don't know how long the black guy lasts anyways. No, nope, not very long. <laughs> well, there is there is a guy on this season. His name's Q, former football player. Really? And he is awesome. I love this guy. Is he really? it? Well, he, he's very strategic, but there, you know, if there's one person who kind of makes him, like, not like necessarily upset, but he can read people really well. He's like, I'm getting rid of him. Let's let's go. You're out. Like type really? thing. That's yeah, awesome. Oh yeah. Like one guy just quit on a challenge and he was like, now this guy's gone. Oh yeah. That's we phenomenal. Just, Gary beat his face. Uh, yeah. If you, you quit. Uh, I used to do radio in Detroit. Now he worked with a guy named Clarence Black and he was on season three, I think. Really? Yeah, he got bounced pretty early. Tall, black, athletic guy. They're like, you're, you're done. You're, 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 you're out. <laughs> you're out of here. I, you're way too athletic. <laughs> you're out. I told you well, question number awesome, six. Awesome All right, last question here from the 618. Would you rather play a round with Tiger at your local course or play a round at Augusta without Tiger? Oh, I'm playing with Tiger. I'm not. I'm not nearly good enough to play at Augusta. No. Yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna, and, and <laughs> right. We can throw a few back, have a good time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely. Hit the turn. I'm, get I some birdie not. juice in you. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> birdie <laughs> juice. <laughs> Put swing oil. Oh, I'm playing better now. No, you're hammered, and you don't realize that you're, you're, you're worse. I feel better, it though. It feels better, though. Yeah. Man. We All did right. get a, a text real quick. You'll like this, Anthony. This one's from Jared. Man, you guys got me wanting to play Assault so bad. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The Assault was my favorite. Man, you got to uh, duck and dodge. Yep. And get, oh. They're up there with thump. It thump. was just amazing. And then you got to grab the thing and yeah, shoot it at them. Yeah, buddy. It was a good time. Damn. I used to like that show. Now, just heartbreaking. Uh, again, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Don't watch that documentary if you, <laughs> if you enjoyed American Gladiators. All right. It's Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Apparently Nickelodeon, too, if you liked Nickelodeon. Oh, I, won't, I can't that, watch that uh, either. Oh, They're yeah. just ruining everything from oh, the 90s. I've seen that. It's hmm. Apparently, everybody it's was just horrible human beings in the 90s. Okay, let's get to Jeremy <laughs> Rutherford. They still are. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're still horrible. They're still horrible. We're just, if you did we're anything in the 90s. About it. Yeah, exactly. It's oh, being man. unearthed now. All right, Jeremy Rutherford next on 101 ESPN. At r and Tire Express, it has never been easier to get the tires that you need and the wheels that you want. Now through April 15th. So you only got five days, and we're only almost through April 10th. So act quickly here. You can request a quick quote, and the r and team will pay half your first month's payment. That's half your first month's payment. And with r and when, when r and says quick quote, they do mean quick. We're talking about 60 seconds tops, and then you're going to have half your month payment uh, courtesy of r and Tire Express. So simply submit your contact info, vehicle year, make, and model on rnrtires.com, and then you're going to secure half off with RR Tires. Don't worry, requesting a quote is a no commitment inquiry. RR Tire Express, they offer flexible payment options. Everyone's approved. No credit is needed. Plus, you're going to enjoy peace of mind coverage that includes free tire installation, free rotations, free flat repair, and much more. Let the RR Tire Express team pay half your first month on all in stock tires and wheels when you request a quick quote at rnrtires.com. That's RR Tires. Dot com. You can also give them a call. 1-833-ROLL-NOW and do so today. That's r r Tire Express.
notes and nuggets. It's time for the Rutherford Report with our Blues insider, Jeremy Rutherford. Brought to you by Scott Lee Heating Company, a proud Mitsubishi Electric Elite contractor. It's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Kerry Davis, Anthony Stalter, Jamie Rivers is downtown. Valley Sports Midwest coverage tonight as the Blues take on the Blackhawks, and we've got the game for you right here on 101 ESPN. Jeremy Rutherford, our Blues insider with The Athletic. You can follow him on Twitter at JP Rutherford. Um, and he joins us right now via the 101 ESPN celebrity. What's up, JR? Oh, not too much, guys. Just glad to hear your opinion on UFC. I just can't get into it. Give me, give me boxing 10 out of 10 times. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I've, I've tried to do the, the UFC. My, I got buddies that are diehard with yeah. it, and they're still like, hey, you got to watch this match, you gotta, your fight or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I can't, I can't get into it. Were you an American Gladiators fan, Jer? No, no, really oh. didn't get into that either. Yeah. Oh, man. What the yeah. childhood? I, my dad was a, uh, he worked at the Chase Park Hotel when they did wrestling at the Chase. So uh, he would run into all those guys and come home with stories. So That's I watched cool. a little wrestling at the Chase and then went on to WWF, but I've kind of given that up too. But sure. But boo hoo on the UFC. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, the Blues earned just three of a possible six points out of their recent three-game road trip that pushed them to the brink now of elimination for the playoff berth. Uh, Odds-wise, doesn't look good, but they're still mathematically in it. Uh, you know, Jr. What as you as you look at the the upcoming schedule here, and you're somebody that is looking for storylines constantly. What is the storyline as the Blues wrap up their season over the next two weeks? Yeah, yeah, I think they'd need, uh, like, a solar eclipse to come through to mm. make the playoffs. There's pro- probability yeah, of, of that. Just had one. You know, we yeah. just did, so. <laughs> just had one. Yeah. possible. Nice. Yeah, no, there's, to me, there's a ton of storylines, and, I mean, you're not going to be able to watch the next four games, and there's not going to be a lot of developments with these storylines, but I think the number one thing is watching some of these young guys play, and I pointed that out in the article. I know you guys have talked about it, but I was excited to write about Zachary Bolduc uh, for the Athletic this morning. Um, number one, because here's a guy, first-round draft pick a couple years ago, and, and just because he wasn't here or he wasn't tearing it up in the American Hockey League, everybody said this guy's a bottom six forward or could be a bust even, and now here he is on the top line with Robert Thomas scoring goals. So to me, that's probably the top storyline that, that I'm enjoying watching is Zachary Bolduc, but there's other guys, uh, some players that we've seen all this year. Matt Kessel, can he do enough to to put himself into a top four role next year if they do make some changes on defense? These are things that Doug Armstrong's paying attention to down the stretch, and I think Blues fans uh, should be too. Jr. We heard uh, Bannister. He's talked about you know the younger guys getting opportunities to play. How does what, how does that sit with some of the older guys like Kevin Hayes, who is a, a healthy scratch, or guys that aren't getting those opportunities because maybe some of these younger guys are. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Um, you know, I don't know what it's like to be in the shoes of Kevin Hayes tonight, who's going to be a Drew Bannister saying today that we want to mix in some veterans with these young guys, but we need the veterans doing the right things and showing them the way. And he felt that Kevin Hayes didn't do that in the last game. So uh, they're going to put make him a healthy scratch uh, tonight. You know, it can't be fun, even though you're unlikely to make the playoffs and there's only a couple games left and you realize there's not much to play for. I think these guys still want to be in the lineup and close out the season. And the fact that a couple of them haven't been the past couple of games probably doesn't uh, sit real well. But the, the organization has to do what's best for them. And, and what's best for them is getting these young players on the ice. Like not only Bolt Duke tonight on the top line for the third straight game, uh, but you're going to see Scott Perinovich in that top pair with Colton Preco. They pushed Nick Letty down to the third pair tonight. And uh, Perinovich, Drew Bannister, said he loved his game last game. And so he's getting near 20 minutes. He had two assists on, on the road trip in one of those games, Anaheim. And, and so anyway, Scott Perinovich showing more than probably he's shown all season. So even though these games don't seem like much down the stretch, I think they do weigh in the minds of the organization. Okay, so with that being said, as you mentioned, you got Kevin Hayes, you got uh, Nick Letty being bumped down. We know what it means now. You just broke that down from a, a, a youth standpoint. You got to you got to watch these young guys. Get, get them a chance. What does it mean for next year, though, for guys like Kevin Hayes and Nick Letty? And we'll throw in some of the other veteran players. Um, you know, whether that's Tory Krug or I know Justin Falk's been banged up. He's an injury-riddled season. What does it mean for next year for these guys? 
Yeah, so I think we can separate the two because I don't think, you know, three or four games down the stretch, whether these guys play much or, or not, the veterans I'm talking about, means a lot in terms of what Doug Armstrong can or will do in the uh, in the offseason. Sure. Anthony, I, I think he's going to try to make some some major moves in terms of moving out some guys who he doesn't think can help this organization moving forward. Uh, but, you know, we've analyzed to death how tough that's going to be to move some of the contracts or find a partner uh, for some of these guys uh, to, to, to be able to be moved. So, um, you know, is Nick Letty in the future plans? Is Tory Krug in the future plans? I think anything's open at this point. It's just going to be Doug Armstrong exploring, finding out who he can move, what's it going to cost to do that, who that leaves him with, what type of, of team are they going to be, a competitive team, are they taking a step back? I just think there's so many unknowns going into the offseason that finally, finally, when we wrap up this regular season, uh, Doug Armstrong's going to be able to address those. JR, when you say anyone is, is possible to be moved, does that include Jordan Bennington as well? Because they, they, I think that that would uh, set off some uh, some alarm bells here in St. Louis if you traded Jordan Bennington. Yeah, and, and I do think, I don't think, you know, I do I think he's going to get traded? No. Do I think that Doug Armstrong is gonna, going to explore everything that doesn't include, like, say, Robert Thomas? Probably. Uh, now the thing the thing with Jordan Bennington is is twofold. One carry is, you know, how competitive do they want to be? If they're going to take a step back, which I don't have any signal that they're going to do that, you know, then you almost have to move a Jordan Bennington because he's going to win you some games on his own. Look what he's done this season to keep this team uh, where it's at. But the other part of this, the, probably the bigger part, is I think a lot of people, including myself, think that you could get a pretty good trade return for Jordan Bennington, right? But in talking to some general managers, and we have somebody at The Athletic working on this story, in fact, uh, there are a lot of goaltenders potentially available. So whether it be a, a Gibson in Anaheim or an Allmark in Boston or a Bennington in St. Louis, so if there are a lot of guys available and also teams aren't necessarily committing four and five and six years to these, these goalies anymore, they're going with the tandem, I don't know that Blues fans are going to get the return that they think they're going to get for a Jordan Bennington. So at that point, does it make sense for Doug Armstrong to trade him? So that one's kind of twofold. Uh, JR, J- Jeremy Rutherford is joining us right now on the Fast Line on 101 ESPN. He's our Blues Insider with The Athletic. JR, we're having this, you know, I don't know if it's a debate, but Jamie, anytime we talk about Jordan Bennington and we talk uh, about him favorably, and I, I, I call him elite. He's an elite goaltender. He may, is he you know, maybe toward the lower end of the elite goaltenders, fine, but the, the dude puts up great numbers and he hasn't had a defense in front of him two years. Let's just be real about it. Uh, why do you think there there is some uh, consternation when it comes to Blues, some Blues fans and Jordan Bennington? Why, why do you think that there's a little bit of like, uh, you know, he's he's a one-year wonder even though the numbers suggest otherwise? Yeah, I think I think that's probably more more national and more league wide than it is local. But I agree with you. It is here in St. Louis too. Like you're you're not you're not wrong for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think his play this year has kind of changed some of that thought. You know, after that Stanley Cup year, and then the save percentage just continually went down for three or four years in a row. Yeah, some people here in St. Louis were singing the same thing what they were singing nationally is that uh, he, he did have that early success and he was not able to hold it up but I just think the number and the, and the success and if you watch night in and night out Anthony the past two years I think some Blues fans have said you know what okay yeah he's a good goaltender but nationally a- around the league and even uh, internationally you know I think people are still hung up on what they remember from a couple years ago and believe me completely hung up on what everybody terms as the antics I've said this mm. before I'll say it again I cannot go into a hockey rink I cannot talk to a out-of-town hockey writer. I cannot do a radio interview without people talking about his reputation. And so you can call it well-earned. You know, obviously, outside of the other night when he, when he got into it a little bit, there hasn't been much of that this season. Yeah. But I, th- I think that what he did, Anthony, there for a couple years in a row with, with all the extracurricular earned him the reputation that he's just not going to be an elite goaltender in the minds of a lot of people around the league. JR, we talked about it earlier. The Blues probably not going to make it into the playoffs just based on, you know, number of games left and and how far they are behind. Uh, If you had to pick one thing, and I know there are uh, multitudes of things that you can choose from, but if there was one thing that you could say, the reason why this team did not make the playoffs this year, what do you think that would be? I think if you had to point to one thing, it's not being competitive and not beating those bottom teams. I mean, we can identify the power play. We can identify secondary scoring, uh, things like that. But 
if they beat the San Jose's 0-2 and 1 against them, the Columbus's, the Chicago's, you're talking six, eight, ten more points, and we're talking about a team who's sneaking in uh, in one of the wild cards, and that's not too far off where Doug Armstrong thought they would be third place potentially in the Central Division. So, um, you know, you look at the situation when you lost that game five to one to San Jose, and then you got them on home ice a chance to pull within three points of a playoff spot and lose 4 nothing. you know, it's just incomprehensible. And then to go back out there, even though you had a great first period in San Jose last week, to lose to him again, you know, in, in, uh, in overtime, I, I just think that you just can't explain that. And so to me, it speaks to the competitiveness of this team. Great, you beat the Boston Bruins. Great, you won five games in a row at one point. You beat some really quality teams. But if you can't beat those teams... 30, 31, 32, then you don't deserve to be in the playoffs. And I, that's the reason, to me, the Blues are not in the playoffs. Well said. JR, uh, have a good night down down at the rink, and we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, boys. That's Jeremy Rutherford, our Blues insider here in the Fast Line on 101 ESPN. I'm always interested to get JR's perspective on it because – He's so good interacting with Blues fans, whether it be, whether it's social media or uh, being down at the rank, just to get his thoughts on things when it comes to the perspective of Jordan Bennington. I think it's interesting. And what yeah. he said, you can't have a conversation with, and he didn't. He wasn't even talking about Blues fans at this point. He was just talking about people around the league. Right. You can't have a conversation about Bennington without somebody bringing up his antics a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it, it should follow you to some degree, but. What what about his on ice performance? Because it's pretty good. Yeah, we're not talking about. I mean, even Draymond Green. But I was gonna say we're not talking about Draymond Green here. Even him, somebody that's got a, a reputation yeah. and he's gonna be, you know, he gets suspended and all that. Everybody still respects his game, right? And what he does for that team. So I don't know why there's a bit of a narrative that that has grown here with Bennington, but I don't know. The guy's had a great year. Yeah, there's a reason why he's, he's getting votes for the Vezina. He's not going to win it, but there's a reason right. why he's, he's getting votes for the Vezina despite the Blues likely missing the playoffs. I found one thing that he said interesting, the fact that, you know, they because they haven't beaten the lower teams, mm-hmm. you, you really, if you don't win those games, that is the difference. I mean, if you beat the, the San Jose Sharks three or four times, or three times, right? They yeah. lost on their own three, three times. Yeah. You are <laughs> right there in your, your head. You're, you're the number two seed right now. Right. So, yeah, that that's a great point. Them not being able to beat the the terrible teams in this league sure. has probably cost them a chance to play that, be in the playoffs this and, year. And look, you're not there. There are teams in the NHL that everybody gets. Everybody's getting paid. It's a paid league, so you're gonna, bad win teams. Two of them. Bad teams are going to win games yeah. too. But you're right to drop three against the Sharks. To drop how many? At least one against the Blue Jackets. That you we lost know. one against the the Blackhawks. Yeah. You you lost, yeah. Start to add those mm-hmm. up, and you look back, you go, "Well, yeah, Jair's right. That's that's one of the many reasons why you've you're likely to miss the playoffs." We got our biggest question of the day next in the fast lane on 101 ESPN. When I sat down with Mosby Building Arts uh, about a month ago, one of the things they said was, you know, we, we come in contact with homeowners on a regular basis that, that they say that they wish they had gone with us the first time around. And they, and they weren't they weren't bragging. It was just they were just saying, look, most homers, uh, most homeowners know that Mosby, the, the name, the reputation. They know that it exists for a great reason. It's because when you work with Mosby Building Arts, you're dealing with the right remodeling company, Companies, a company that doesn't screw around, that doesn't uh, do things improperly just to, you know, have a, have a project that they come in and out of and make a quick buck. They do it right because they know when you have one home remodel that's done right, the next time you're going to think of Mosby as well. But a lot of times what homeowners try to do, and I'm one of them too, I, I, I get it. I'm not shaming anybody here because I'm, I'm speaking to myself too. You're like, I want to save a bunch of money on a home remodeling project or I want to do it myself. Then you spend a lot of time and money and effort 
and you don't get the project done right, it looks sloppy, and then you wind up spending the money to have it done right by the company that you should have went with in the first place. So give Mosby a call. Tell them Salter uh, told you to call. They'd love to hear that. But give them a call right now, too, because they got their spring refresh sale going on. $1,000 off bathrooms plus low monthly payments. They also have the 10% off windows or 12-month payments if you call before April 30th. It's their spring refresh sale. Again, tell them Stalter sent you to qualify for the sale. You're going to love them. 314-909-1800. Call Mosby.com. It's Mosby Building Arts, the right remodeling company. One oh one ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Cardinals lose today four to three. We talked much about we talked a lot about the Cardinals today. We even had BT on the show, Brad Thompson. And if you missed that interview, make sure you go to 101 ESPN.com or check out the free 101 mobile app. Just head to the podcast page. You'll find all of our interviews and full shows there. And it's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Speaking of interviews, we just got done talking with our Blues Insider from the Athletic, Jeremy Rutherford. So if you missed that, you know where to go. Go to the website or use the free 101 mobile app. The Blues are taking on the Blackhawks tonight. Pre-game starts at 6. Puck drop is at 7 and you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. We have our biggest question of the day coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh and this Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling. An independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer.
for the Fast Lane's biggest question of the day. As Mark said in the Sports Center update, we've got our biggest question of the day. Guys, I had a question in mind, but then someone texted in to the Air Comfort Service talk sign from the 314, and I thought this was interesting because we were having this discussion the other day. But the question is, whatever happened to the Shohei Otani stuff? <laughs> Except for they didn't say stuff, they said the other S word. But seriously, like, nobody's talking about this scandal anymore. Like, what, why yeah. do you think that is? This is... This is <laughs> this is why a great PR team is important for somebody like Shohei Otani that could afford it. Mm -hmm. There are ways that you can just kind of bury a story, and one of the ways is to to, to make your statements and then shut the you know what up. Mm. Don't say another word. Like it never happened. Because we, society, we, we will consume something. Yeah. Right up to the point that there's something else to consume, and <laughs> there, there is something always happening. something else yeah. to consume. You'll get you'll get lost. You, you'll you'll it'll be the story for now. Yeah. A week later, it's something else that t that has taken place that sure. has really got your attention. Like, there is there's there have been, been so many things that have happened since that story came out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Women's basketball became a hot topic for right, a while. The tournament right. was going the tournament on. Right. Was going Both on. tournaments were going Both on. Both tournaments. Like it, it will always be something. That's a good call. Just, just be patient, man. The other thing that hasn't happened is there hasn't been anybody that has the smoking gun story yet. Yeah. So if there's not more information that's coming out, there's nothing else to consume. And you run the risk of if you're a major publication of printing something that could get you in trouble. Yeah. So if there's nothing, if there's no other information, and you don't have multiple sources to back up what you have, then there is no story. Right. So, long story short, that's that's kind of the situation that we're seeing right now, and and the Otani stuff is to the texture point or the alluding to. Yeah, it's completely gone away. I'm sure something will come up again. There will be some new information. For now, though, everybody is, is staying quiet. And I wonder how much, too, the fact that Shohei Otani is an international player, and this is kind of, you know, it's, it's he's dealing with, a, you know, an international interpreter, too. I, yeah. I wonder how much that factors in as well. You just can't get the sources you know, that you need. Your lawyer tells you just shut up. Mm -hmm. And I would assume that that's the case here. So Just play baseball, man. That's what you're paying. Came to see What's you play. The Shut up and play. Mm -hmm. Just be quiet, brother. Yeah. Hit home runs. They'll go away. Yeah. Eventually. All right. Plus, I also don't think there is a there's a, there's a certainly there's certainly a huge factor here from a baseball standpoint. If Otani was the one that was wagering on his own games, that that obviously comes from that that's a whole different ball game. Right. We're not talking about an Aaron Hernandez situation where he's playing in the league and there's multiple murder charges where you're trying to unearth that, mm, right. right? And it's like, should he play? Should he not play? How the Patriots should handle it? The Dodgers can look at this and say, well, we're going to let the whole legal process play itself out. And, t and, 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 and you know, fans are not clamoring for more. Well, wait a second here. He shouldn't be on the field. Right. So I think that that's a component, too. So my original question, yeah. there was a uh, an article from MLB.com. What's the panic level for these seven slow starting teams? And the Cardinals are listed on there. Do you think the Cardinals should be even in this article based on the expectations that we have? <laughs> what, what the the other, do you have the other teams that are that are? You yeah, know, I got you don't have it. Astros at four and eight. There should be a panic level there. Diamondbacks at five and seven. I don't think so. I just. That was a good year last year. Twins at three and six. I would say yes on that. Panic. Um, Giants at four and eight. I, I mean, uh, yeah, they made a lot of moves in the offseason. So but did they? They said they yeah. couldn't get free agents that they wanted because nobody wanted to live in San Francisco. They had a city problem. They did Not okay. A... Blake Snell, Matt <laughs> yeah. Chapman, Jung Ho Lee, they did okay. Jorge Soler, Jordan Hicks, who pitched well again today. <sighs> 
we'll save that for tomorrow. Um, and then, <laughs> and then the Cardinals. So no, I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't think they should be yeah, on this they list. They belong in that list. But Will Leach did the article, and Will Leach is a massive, massive Cardinals fan. So of course he's going to slide them ah, in there at the end. That makes so much sense. Yeah, Will Leach is a huge Cardinals fan, so he he wrote it. Uh, Mariners too. Mariners are on this list. I can tell you why Marlins are on this list as well. I can tell you why the Mariners are on this list because I picked them to win the World Series. Ah man. All, they, all, Will, all Will had to do was preseason expectations, talk about how everybody like, you know, people really like Seattle. Yeah. What has gone wrong? Stalter picked them to win the World Series. <laughs> Ended it. That's it? That's all? That's it. Mm. Any Anytime I fall in love with the pitching staff. Thank you. <laughs> anytime I, love with, uh, I fall in love with the pitching staff, that pitching staff goes to hell. Mm. The White Sox a year ago. Now the Mariners. Mm. Yeah, the White Sox was a really tough pick, Anthony. Yes, it was, Gary. <laughs> what do you think is more impressive, Jamie ruining the Arizona Coyotes franchise or you ruining Ooh. literally any franchise that you pick preseason? Of course, now that's Just not baseball, the case. Though. When a team goes to a championship, you ride because their bandwagon picked, and they that's win. That's kind of a late pick, though. Yeah. you talking about preseason picks. I would have to say, hey, Jamie. I did fine football-wise. I had the Niners and, and uh, Ravens. Well, I'm yeah, only one team won. And the Ravens choked. They did. You had both the Ravens. Got, both were in the title game. Mm, doesn't count. Baseball. Baseball, Almost it matters. Doesn't count. Oh, come I on. I would say, Jamie, because we had a story earlier. Where are mm-hmm. the Coyotes going now? Yeah, they might be heading yeah, to full Utah. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Probably. Mm-hmm. Jamie wins. He hasn't, he hasn't ruined a, a, a franchise, eh, a city. The Sox look pretty rough. <laughs> oh, they're still in Chicago, aren't they? Mm. For now. They yeah. might be burning stuff on the field, and it's not even a promotion. <laughs> oh, Very true. Goes. <laughs> You know, in it? fairness to me, the White Sox, the White Sox have had their own problems for years Before now. Before you got involved, I mean, they, they had a father-son duo hop out of the stands one time and stab oh, they the, did. Uh, the first, first base, base coach, coach of, yeah. of the Kansas City Royals. Really? Yeah, I, I didn't know that. that. Have you not seen that? You didn't know that? No, I yeah, thought I really... the only father-son duo in Major League Baseball were the Griffies. No, it was no, a. This is a fan. No, these were. Oh, yeah, the these bonds. were. Yeah. These were fans. I've been at the plane at you know oh, on the yeah. same team. Sure. At oh, the same time. Yeah. No, these were fans. They hopped out of the. Gotcha. Yeah. They attacked. I don't know if they stabbed him, but they attacked. Uh, hmm. I thought they stabbed him. Galboa, I think was his name. That's crazy. Do you think he was, he was the first base coach of the Royals? Do you think they ran up to him or were like, would you rather be stabbed in the fingers and the toes or in the gums? I don't think they gave him <laughs> any <laughs> option. No. From Jigsaw? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Isn't that wild, though, that fans would just jump over the the, yeah, the, the railing I mean, and go like, yeah, hey, good job, nice home run, and just oh, like they do, trot the bases with him? <laughs> would Hank Aaron would hit his home run? <laughs> oh, that was man. amazing. Yeah, no kidding. Boy, that's <laughs> terrifying like, for when players. The Cleveland Indians won the pennant and the fans jumped over the railing and celebrated with Dorn and all those guys. The wild thing. <laughs> now that was great. <laughs> now everybody, everybody can yeah. appreciate that. All right, we got to get to bet the board. We got to get to uh, three stars of the day, criticism, some compliments, all that next on 101 ESPN. You know, when it comes to getting older and you're, uh, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, a lot of times you're, you're dealing with fatigue, you're dealing with lack of energy, maybe focus, and the more responsibilities you have, the more you really feel that stuff. Uh, Jamie was talking about feeling run down. He went into mentality and he eventually recommended to me because he started to feel great. I went down there, had, you know, done the blood work and everything, very easy process. And I realized that just like Jamie, I was low on testosterone and other vitamins. So I hopped on the mentality program and it, it didn't take that long where all of a sudden I felt great. I knew I had more energy throughout the course of the day. I knew that I, I, I felt more motivation and more drive. Uh, I felt like, all right, well, hey, uh, whether I was in the gym, I could do one more one more set or one more rep or at home. You know, I could do I could take on one more project on a weekend. It's little stuff that helps make your life go a lot easier. 
if you've been running a low on energy and you've been pouring your money into supplements, how about you try something that actually works? Go down to Mentality. Tell them that Jamie and Anthony sent you down there. They got two locations, one in South County, one in Chesterfield. Sit down with them. Tell them how you're feeling. And if the blood work comes back where you're also low in testosterone, fear not. They've got solutions for you. A lot of it's covered by your, your insurance companies. They'll take care of you. They constantly monitor your health. You're going to love it. It's Mentality. You can visit them at lowtusa.com. Or like I said, check in, pop in one of their locations. Fantastic work. That's Mentality. anything from today's show you can always download the podcast available at 101 espn.com your 101 espn mobile app all brought to you by dobbs tire and auto centers don't forget you can also catch the opening drive this friday morning live from 7 a.m to 10 a.m for the grand opening of the new rawlings experience at westport plaza rawlings opening the rawlings experience right here in st louis visitors can experience the past present and future for everything baseball and softball the opening drive live this friday morning for the grand opening of the rawlings experience in westport plaza get all the details now at 101 espn ESPN.com. Marsh, give us those updating standings. All right, so I am five and two. You and Carrie are both four and three, and Jamie is three and four mm. on the month. Okay. All right. So Marsh, you still got honors though. So my f- yes, my pick tonight. You got fog one. Let's go. Uh, my pick tonight will be Jackson Holiday to record two plus bases. Oh, oh okay. I like that. Uh, you still have honors, I think. All right. Carrie? Did I win? I won yesterday, right? Yeah, Warriors won. Okay, give me the Yankees minus one and a half versus the Miami Marlins. Let's go, Yankees. There, 10 and 2. So you're taking the uh, the run line for the Yankees. Yeah. I like that. I see you, Carrie. Uh, 
Ooh, I don't like any of these baseball plays here. Why don't we go to the NHL real quick? Not a lot of games tonight. Give me the Vegas Golden Knights against the Edmonton Oilers. <sighs> How dare you? Six three and one. Both teams are six three and one over the last ten games. I'll take Vegas. Uh, and I believe Jamie would like to fade Vegas because the Blues need Vegas to lose. There you go. So there you go. I think Jamie would probably take Edmonton on the money line. Yes, he would. There you have it. What do we got for criticisms and compliments, Marsh? Uh, well, we actually just need to get to the three stars okay. of the day. <laughs> yeah, we're running out of time yeah, here. Yeah, we got Blues hockey. We don't yeah. want uh, Grant Francis to be upset with us no, in our out time nope. tonight, of course. Uh, so our third star of the day will go to Wolf, the dog uh, that is the companion <laughs> of... Um, Waldo. Waldo, yeah. yeah. Wow. I actually mm-hmm. never heard of Wolf, so uh, good, to, good to know that he exists. Uh, our second star of the day goes to Nitro. Yeah, yeah. Nitro yeah. from American yeah. Gladiators. Oh, yeah. He's still, uh, you know, he's out he's there. Out there. He's doing his thing. Mm-hmm. Sure. Didn't get paid. Poor guy. And our first star of the day goes to, and this is courtesy of the Air Comfort Service text line, any bandwagon Anthony jumps on. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, UConn, Kansas City Chiefs. <gasps> when I hop on those bandwagons, you typically win. Yeah, well, Just saying. Championship game. I didn't announce it, but I was on South Carolina's bandwagon, too, if you can believe it or not. <laughs> Undefeated season. Let's go, Gamecocks. All right, we got Blues Hockey coming up next. See you.